Next year, Cowboys. Yeah. Or next year. <laughs> next year, yes. <laughs> Not again. That's our new name, bro. That's our new name. The Dallas Next Year Cowboys. Wow. All right, what's up, everybody? It's Austin back at you with the 100th episode of the Book of Austin Life of Detours podcast. I am super honored to be, if you couldn't see from behind me, we are in Tattoo Mark's Man Cave. What is going on? Tattoo Mark, the number one Dallas Cowboys fan, the man himself. What's up, buddy? Uh, bro, I'm very blessed to be here still. Yeah. Yeah. Damn, and, man. And uh, thank you very much for having me on. You know, it's an honor. Oh. You know, definitely for sure. Yeah, I'm super excited about this one, man, because we've uh, actually kind of had this conversation before, the one that we'll have later about, like, when we take it back and we talk a little bit about your life, because uh, you actually, tr- like, we tried to get things together so that I could write your story for you, and it is one hell of a story, man. And uh, I I left my notes at home because I want to hear all this stuff again for the first time kind mm-hmm. of deal, so uh, whenever we get around to that, I can actually have, like, an honest reaction again, because, dude, it's... It's wild out here. Absolutely, because people all know me as Tattoo Mark. Mm-hmm. Not too many people know me as Mark Schimpel. That's behind on the scenes. Right. And, that, and that's what people need to know mm-hmm. because when you hear about Mark Schimpel behind on the, behind on the scenes, you'll, you understand where I'm relating to. Oh, yeah. Yes, yeah, so because people probably see you right now as like a personality. Right. And not right. like as the man himself, you know? Yeah. Yeah, so we got Tattoo Mark over here, and then we have... Our buddy Ernie. So Ernie, you're... Also, I want to say something about Mark. You know, as what you just say, everybody knows him as a personality. Mm-hmm. That's what I know Mark as. You yeah. know, I don't know Mark Shenfield, mm-hmm. but I am can't wait. Oh, dude, it's, it's <laughs> going to be fun, man. I yeah. can't wait. I yeah. can't wait. So how, how do you know Mark? Um, Actually, through Rowdy Nation tailgate. Oh, yeah. Um, we've been tailgating for, what, uh, Joe's probably been doing about five, six years. So mm-hmm. I've met him at some tailgates. I've already seen him before previous years on, you know. His, oh, you see him in little clips on TV and yeah. stuff all the time. You yeah. Know yeah. What I mean, yeah. <laughs> you catch that, his face that famous, every game. This famous portrait is, uh-huh. I mean, that's that's what you know Tattoo Mark as. Oh, absolutely, you know, yeah. Seeing him at a spring train or a training camp all the time out there and yeah. stuff like that. Yeah, he's. Yeah, because you, you lived out there, right? Yeah, I did. Before, okay. All of yeah. my life. Mm hmm. And so you got to go to all of those. That's that's cool, man. Being a fan, like not being actually from, like not being able to be here in Texas, that's like the the next best thing, you know? Right. <laughs> yeah. So I do want to hear, uh, you were actually talking a minute ago, you've been on a couple of podcasts and stuff, and like what is like, I would say like, so you just did one with Fox 5, was it you said? Yeah. Or something like that? Yeah, yeah. I did one in Channel 5, mm-hmm. Channel 11, Channel 4. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then you've been on a couple of podcasts, so yeah. you've been down this road a little Absolutely. bit before. Yeah. yeah. This yeah. this is not my first rodeo. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about, yeah. <laughs> let's get it going, baby. Yeah, yeah. Dude, let's go. So we do need to let's go ahead and start out. Do we want to start out with the Cowboys or do we want to talk talk a little bit about what you got going on with the Bears and all that and like with the the foundations and things? Let's actually do that so that we can get that out before we get mean. <laughs> okay, first of all, this is this is my fifth annual Teddy Bear Drive mm-hmm. for the Children's Hospital. I started in 2020. And I started with one, which is Cooks, mm-hmm. and um, all of these other hospitals heard what I've been doing. And see, when you're, I'm not saying when you're good, but when you got your stuff together mm-hmm. and know what you're doing and you do it the right way, people hear about you. Oh yeah. Okay. So the word travels out. So the word of mouth is the best advertisement you can ever get in anything. Oh, way better. Yeah. So, so th- they all heard about me and. Um, I'm at uh, 18 hospitals as of this year. Yeah, and um, um, we've we've had people donate some bears and all that. We just need more bears, and we need more 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 donors, you know. And um, it's it's a it's a great cause because see, we always wake up and we think think we got a bad, but you know what, brother? Let me tell you something. When you go in those hospitals with me and you see these kids fighting for their lives. Mm-hmm. You wake up every morning the next day and say, thank you, dear Lord, for giving me another day of breathing because, you know what, you're blessed. Yeah. I was at um, I, I was at Scott Wright's hospital this year, and um, we, 
we went into the patio area to take pictures by the Christmas tree, and then we were coming out, and there was a, a mother and a dad there. They were crying with the Bible in their hand. They just lost their, their eight-year-old son through cancer. Oh, man. Oh. So eight, eight years old, mm-hmm. that kid did not make it to high school. He didn't even make it to junior high. Yeah. So, so, and he probably missed, you know, two other years. Exactly. So, so, yeah. so, these kids. What I'm trying to say is, these kids don't belong there, but mm-hmm. they're there for a reason because they're sick. Okay. Yeah. They need to be home with their parents, with their family, waiting for Santa Claus to come in or or, or birthdays, whatever. Doing kid stuff. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, that's what they should be doing. Yeah. But 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 to be tied up in a hospital. Wires. I mean. What better can you do at the Christmas time and, and put a smile on their, their face with a teddy bear? Yeah. Come on, really? Yeah. I mean, I mean, I have some people like, can you donate a couple bears? I can't afford it. Well, if you can afford to go to the bars and, and uh, buy beer, yeah. you, you can't afford to uh, buy a teddy bear? Where's your heart? That's all I got to say. Where is your heart? So how does how does it work exactly? So people order the bears from... Yeah, the, you- yeah, yeah. The, the, there's, I mean, there's, there's, there's actually a couple ways. Mm-hmm. You can find me on s- social media... They can get in touch with me. They can, we can meet up. I can, I can pick up on the bears, or they can call this wholesale warehouse in Dallas that I deal with. It's it's called Plush in a Rush, mm-hmm. and you call them. You you ask them for Tammy. Tell Tammy that they're going to place an order for tattoo mark, and have them call me, and they'll they'll call me, and I'll go pick them up. Mm-hmm. They don't even have to pick them up. They can do everything all over the phone. Yeah. I can go pick them up. And I'll take them to storage because I got a storage where I store everything. I start now because I got to have all the hospitals covered by November. How many bears is that? Uh, we're we're looking at this year close to maybe five thousand bears we need. Oh wow! Yeah, dude. yeah, yeah. So we need so, your help. So. Yes, we exactly. definitely need your help. Please <laughs> yeah. come on out, man. So hit up Tattoo yeah. Mark. Yeah, all plush in a rush. And do you get to pick, like, the name on the jersey or anything like that? Or is it just, like, a, a fairly generic, like, zero, zero jersey, you know? No, it, it, it's it's actually a teddy bear, okay? Mm-hmm. Right. And, and But it has a jersey on it, doesn't it? No, no. Uh, I think it's I mean, got one over there, but... Yeah. But, <laughs> but yeah, um, they, uh, they're they actually, like, six inches. And the mm-hmm. six-inch bear is, like, $2.50. Come on. Yeah, right, okay. I mean, yeah. come on. Yeah. I mean, it's not a lot of money, you know? And then... I'll even go do it. Remember, you're doing it for a good cause. Mm-hmm. It's a very good cause. Mm-hmm. That's the reason why I'm doing it. I wouldn't have done this for five years if it wasn't for a good cause. I'm right. You know? I mean, yeah, just putting a smile on a kid's face, you know? Yeah. That's like the biggest thing that you can possibly do, dude, especially in that kind of situation. Mm-hmm. That's rough. And it's the little things that will make them smile, dude. And I know, because you said, like, you go up to the hospital and stuff. Like, just you bringing that energy in there for them, dude, is probably awesome, man. They love me. I come in with my Jeep, uh, come in with my Dallas Cowboys Santa Claus outfit. Yeah. I had um, the Texas Live cheerleaders there. I, I got my whole staff there. We, we all got our badges. There you go. We're on legit, you know. Mm-hmm. He has his there too, you know. But, there you uh, go, yeah. Uh, yeah, you know, uh, I, I mean, because there are protocols. So all bears must have tags on them. Yeah. Okay? Otherwise, they won't ex- accept them. And then um, uh, you, have to, you also have to, have to pass... A background uh, in a, a investigation, you know, because um, they undo to background be able to checks. To bring the, the bears in for them to, um, to be oh, with there. me to be in there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. I now mean, that's good. Yeah. Absolutely. Now the five years there's only been one hospital that we were able to do room to room, kid to kid, hand it to them. Yeah. That was in El Paso. My uh, my my uh, one of my helpers that is is also with me, Joanna Lopez. She, she actually. Her and her daughter did it for me because I was unable to go out there to make the deliveries. Mm-hmm. So she, she did it for me, and and it, it's a lot of work. I mean, people wow. think just collecting beers. This is a lot of work, man. To to put any organization together, it's a lot of work. Oh, yeah. But but you know what? Any way that you can bless a person, do it. I don't care if it's giving a bear, taking someone out out to lunch, whatever you got to do, do it. And if you have to give money to homeless, do it because you know what. God knows that you did your part. It's up to them to do their part. That's right. Exactly. You know, and yeah. and uh, to uh, to be able to bless them, these and kids at Christmas time, I'm all, all f- for it. You know, and uh, uh, this is uh, going to be my, my fifth year. And Ernie, 
We need to make this thing happen, bro. We need to get on the ball right now, man, because uh, we got to get the ball rolling because the longer we wait, I mean, November's going to be here real quick. Oh, dude. Yeah. yeah. Dude, let's, get some, let's get these kids some bears, bro. Exactly. Yeah. You know? So, everybody, take two. Plush, plush and a rush. Plush and a rush. Hit up Tattoo Mark over here, dude. Yeah. yeah. It'd be easy. Yeah. Uh, that you, was another conversation that me and Mark got um, talking about is I'm with Pan American Golf Association, mm-hmm. and um, we have 40 chapters at least across the United States. Oh, I mean, yeah. I'm sorry, Texas. So Mark was telling me he goes to El Paso, Houston, and San Angelo, mm-hmm. and of course here. So I was telling Mark, I was like, we have chapters there. So that's where the conversation started as well as you know me coming on on board with him to do these bear stuff. Yeah. So I could reach out to these other chapters and we can all help each other out. There well, you go. basically we're helping the kids out. And, yeah. You know that's the main objective. Absolutely. Is, you know, yeah. But you guys can't out. do it all on your own. You no. Know? It's, yeah. it's, it's, I, like he said, it's it's impossible. I mean, it's it's hard. Yeah, yeah. It's a lot you know, of and I mean, just getting them all out and like <laughs> that's just, that's just wild. Dude. You know, I am very blessed to have good staff. Ernie, I mean, I got like I got like ten staff members. You know, and um, uh, I got to give a shout out to Frank Speed Shop in Ulysses. He's always helped helped me out. Mm-hmm. Frank and Tomasi, um, Jamie from uh, um, Star One Mobile. Um, I mean. He's awesome too, you know. Yeah. They're actually putting in a, a, a lot. They actually donate a, a, a lot of bears. But um, whatever you guys can do, do it, you know. And then for me to be able to try to serve the whole state of Texas is going to be tough. But yeah, watch me. So everything you I'm have right do now it. is in Texas. Eighteen hospitals in Texas. Yes. Yeah, okay. Nice. I mean, I'm all over the state of Texas. Mm-hmm. So, so let's get this stuff going in other states too, guys. That's yeah. that's what I have, that's what I plan. Um, so. I have a lady by the name of Lady Vice. We're going to get into that, too. She, mm-hmm. She's my buddy, her, her and Cuff. And um, they they live in Ohio, and I'm trying to get them to to start one out there. I'm trying to get one in California. I'm trying to get Green Bay, in, uh, Wisconsin involved, Minnesota. I'm, I mean, it is tough, but I got the time to do it, so, so yeah. I, I can get on them. I get on on the phone because I don't got no broken fingers, you know. There you go. So, yeah. <laughs> you know, and you got some good connections. I mean, yeah. just met, like all the people that you've met, like throughout your time, like doing the tattoo mark thing, you know, like meeting all these super fans and all these people that can go out and like help you with this kind of stuff. I'm sure you know there's plenty, especially with like Green Bay or something like that. If there's a guy like you for Green Bay oh, the, that sets up, you know, something similar, there is some hardcore Green Bay fans oh, out yeah, there. I'm yeah. But but I will say. Them and Minnesota mm-hmm. are the nicest fan base in the NFL. That's fail. actually true, man. Whenever That's crazy, Green Bay man. came to town, dude, I was, yeah. I was bartending down there, and I was doing the shuttle and stuff, man, and, like, they were fantastic. They're nice they people, man. Nice people. Oh, yeah. 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 They, they know how to host you. Um, there's no, like, no fights or no arguments or people don't get drunk and act stupid and, mm-hmm. and want to fight people. I mean, there's none of that at all, you know. Um, but, yeah. That's the typical, you know, football talking shit here and there, you know, of course. But it's all, it's pretty classy, you yeah. know. As far the as only fan goes. base that I can see is the worst, and that, that is the Philadelphia yeah, Eagles. There you go, I, dude, yeah, I can say because I don't get paid for the Cowboys, yeah. so I, I can speak my mind. Yeah. And but trust me, we got more coming, baby. Those are crazy, bro. Yes, horrible. Golly. The worst fan base in the, the NFL. Yeah. Yeah. I've also heard that if you're wearing, like, Cowboy stuff and you go to the restaurant – they won't serve you. I've heard that too. Yes, oh, that's crazy, yeah. <laughs> dude. Yeah, that's if unbelievable. You didn't make it into the yeah. restaurant, walking down the street, man. Yeah, it's crazy down there. It, it is just horrible. But like but, when they when they won the Super Bowl and they fuck, they like destroyed their whole city. It's like why? Why though? How is this I a mean, celebration right I now? I mean, it man? doesn't make sense. Man. <laughs> that so, makes sense. So you, you're gonna destroy the property, yeah. uh, your city, your. I mean, for what? Yeah, this is supposed to be a good thing, guys. Yeah. You're making yourselves look stupid. Exactly. Man, but, uh, <laughs> I didn't see so nothing happen to the city of Arlington after we won the right. World Championship yeah, in baseball. Dude. Yeah, <laughs> yep. The place didn't burn down. No. probably some pretty wild parties, though. Man. Oh, yeah. It's going off, dude. Definitely wild parties, <laughs> for sure. It's kind of like Mark's passion for the Cowboys has mm-hmm. come fruition to help out these kids. Like you said, he knows people in these other cities and stuff, so, yeah. you know, it's all a, you know. got to build a network. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Just it, going out you know, like them seeing His passion was the Cowboys, right. but now it's kind of, you know, rolling off into the, you know, the teddy bears and stuff. So mm-hmm. it's, it's good because he knows a lot of people. And oh, yeah. The reason they know him is because of Tattoo Mark. Yeah, that's right. But, yeah. you know, it's 
it's funny how it's it's happening, Mark. It's hand in hand. Yeah. See, yeah. yeah. See, I always tell people that you know what, the Cowboys sometimes don't win. Mm-hmm. I don't win, but the kids always win. Remember that. Yeah. Always win. They, they always yeah, win. Absolutely. Do it for the kids. It's yeah. all about the kids. Yeah. This is not connected to the Cowboys. No. Anyway, this is just a good yeah. cause by f- for good kids. By yeah. far, the Cowboys are not paying me to do this teddy bear drive. Mm-hmm. I do want to make it clear: the Cowboys are not paying me to do this. Mm-hmm. I do it on my own. It's a nonprofit organization, but I am following the lead of the Dallas Cowboy players by going to the hospitals and all that. There you go. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, because yeah. they do they do a lot of stuff like that. Yeah. As well, yeah. But- yeah. Yes. So if the Cowboys wanted to get involved with you. I would love it. That'd be awesome. <laughs> that would be yeah. great. That would help out a lot. Yeah. <laughs> Jerry. G- Gene Jones. <laughs> Gene Jones. Not Jerry. Gene. I need you to give me a call. We need to talk. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. We need to talk. I heard a lot of good things about you. Uh-huh. Yeah, and we're about yeah. to hear a bunch yeah. of yeah, she's bunch awesome. Of good things. Yeah, she's awesome. Well, I heard that. Uh, Wait, Gene Jones, is that Jerry's wife or his? That's his wife. Yeah. Uh, uh, there was a... F- like a pot wonder team that needed a like a f- few f- few equipment and all that. Mm-hmm. She, they said, they actually made a phone call to her. The next day, there was a semi there with a whole bunch of there stuff. You go, wow. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, she, she don't mess around. Mm-hmm. Wow. She's awesome, man. Because it's all about the heart. Yeah, yeah. that family got the heart. Okay, yeah. people talk about the Jones organization. Mm-hmm. The, they're mean, nice people, to man. Business, you know, yeah, it's you a business. You know, sure a you know, it's a yeah. business. Mm-hmm. But uh, but. I mean, Stephen always treated me right. Charlotte's a sweetheart. She always comes up to say hi to me at the games, you know, take yeah. pictures and all that. Jerry, you know, Jerry's Jerry, you know, yeah. but uh, Jerry's busy. Uh, yeah, yeah. He's, <laughs> he's a busy guy, and uh, and then his wife is a, is the wife's a sweetheart too, you know. Mm-hmm. So, but um, yeah, I'm, I'm actually b- pretty much blessed to represent, not work for them, but represent the Dallas Cowboys. Yeah. I got to make that clear because people when I say I yeah, am, you love this I am team, with dude. the Cowboys, they always think that oh the Cowboys are paying you. I'm like no. Yeah. I, I mean I wish them. I mean I wish them they did. I'll take it. Yeah. I mean I live literally across the street from the stadium, uh-huh. and I got to pay for every single game that I go to. Dude, I see your, it's your crazy. balcony over here at every. Uh, whenever I'm dropping people off, they'll get off the bus and I'll look across and I'm like hey, look at that. Dude. Yeah. I'm like yeah, that's that's old Mark over there, dude. Yeah. You know they know me by my. It's either the balcony or the damn Jeep, man. I'm Jeep telling you. Is so sick. Though. I mean, I can't go to, I mean, I don't go to a gentleman's club anymore because I'm too old for that stuff. But, <laughs> right. but, but if I was, mm-hmm. that would not look good because people would know who I am and oh, yeah. what I'm doing for the kids mm-hmm. that don't go. Yeah, so, for you know, sure, yeah. so if you ever do that, take an Uber. Yeah. <laughs> hey, I'll drive. I'll drive. All right, all right, there you go. Yeah. Uh, but, but yeah. yeah t- it's a blessing to give them, give them back to the community, and uh, that's that's my whole priority is uh, being a super fan. It's not about me. It's not about the Cowboys. It's just giving back to the community yeah. because it's very important, and a little a lot of people should think that way too mm-hmm. because um, life is too short, man. Hell yeah! Dude. Remember, God can give it to you and you take it right back in a heartbeat. Mm-hmm. Yeah, just absolutely. Those kids, man, and just think about. God, that'll put man, it into perspective. Man. Yeah, so, you know, it, we're actually so blessed, man. Right we're actually very blessed, brother. Yeah. So, you know, it, uh, when, you, when you think you have a bad, you really don't. And uh, to be able to give You're them back, right. yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's all about where is your heart at, man? Mm-hmm. Where is your heart, you know? So, yeah. so uh, I did ask you this question whenever we did the interview last time, and I remember it being a fantastic answer, and – I didn't look at it because I wanted to hear it again. So what does being a super fan mean to you? So whenever you say, I'm Tattoo Mark, super fan for the Dallas Cowboys, what does that mean? It's representing a team, being loyal, faithful, and realize that it's only a game. And to be able to, because uh, you have to realize, so when you're representing the Dallas Cowboys, America's team. We are still America's team, by the way, you guys. Yes. Okay. Suck on that. Um, <laughs> it actually falls back. Even though you're not getting paid, mm-hmm. but it falls back on them because you're representing their company. So whatever you do will fall back with the Dallas Cowboys. That's why a lot of people call me to do stuff. I get interviews with do, doing all this stuff. is because I've been doing this for 20 years. Mm-hmm. I don't have to advertise myself. They all know me already. Yeah. People know who Tattoo Mark is. I mean, if you don't, you do have a cell phone, Google it up. Yeah, <laughs> Google go. doesn't yeah. lie. But, <laughs> but no, you know, to, to be able to represent America's team, uh, I'm, a, I'm a very honor, 
honor, but you, you have to be faithful and you got to be loyal. Yeah. And by, by saying faithful and loyalty is, you know what? Remember, it's just a game. Mm-hmm. And 99% of the fights over there is because of alcohol. Yeah. I mean, they're out there all day, all night, partying and drinking, and they get in there and they drink more. And then what I hate is when a, a same team fan fights each other. I'm like, <laughs> that doesn't you, make what sense. What are you guys doing, bro? I mean, yeah. come on. I'm the same so, team. But, but no, it's, it's actually to be faithful, to be loyal, because... I always look at it this way. These kids that go to these games are looking up to me. Yeah. I'm a role model to them. Mm-hmm. So whatever I'm doing, they're going to follow me. Mm-hmm. So you don't want them to follow the, the wrong way. Yeah. Um, when I'm now, – now, this is me. When I am dressed up and I'm at the games or any uh, Dallas Cowboy event, mm-hmm. I don't drink alcohol. Yeah. I will not have a – I will have water in, in the, my hand. But I will not have alcohol because to me, it doesn't go good. Yeah, I mean that's 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 not my um, personal reason. Mm-hmm. For it. Yeah, because you don't want them seeing seeing it done wrong, you know. No, then then you know what? Again, it falls back. My teddy bears. People think, oh, yeah. well, Teddy Mark's a drunk and uh, he's doing this with the kids. Yeah. So so it doesn't look good. Yeah. So you you have to use common sense. You yeah. Know? <laughs> yeah. Basically, you yeah. know. So you got to do it the right way. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Drink at home. Yeah. There you go. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Now, or after. Celebrate after. You know? Yeah. Now I think there's a your sorrows after. There was another part of that question was what makes you be a super fan than a regular fan? Mm-hmm. Now super fans are totally different than regular fans. Yeah. Let me explain it to you right now. A lot of you guys won't won't agree on it, but us super fans, yes. We spend a lot of money. A lot of money on games, outfits. Traveling, everything. They don't pay us, okay? That comes out of our pocket. We got to pay for the the game tickets. That comes out of our pocket. Being a super fan, you're dressed up in your character. Like, I'm Tattoo Mark. reason why I'm Tattoo Mark, I got 22 players tattooed on my body. I I actually, I actually hold, yeah. I hold the record out there with 22 tattoos. Mm -hmm. So I, I call myself. Tattoo Mark, there's yeah. suit man, James Wright, he wears a suit. There's Wrecking Ball, wears that big old helmet. Yeah, Balls yeah. Mahoney, he, he also wears a small helmet too. But but we all got our character. So we got to follow our character. And we're always down in the Miller Light. We're always on TV. So we're representing the Cowboys. The nation's seeing us out there. So, I mean, regular fans, and then plus... A lot of us super fans, we don't drink and we will tailgate, but just to make ourselves notice to be yeah. there. But then we go in the stadium right away because uh, it's just that there's too many fights, and I've never seen a super fan get caught up into a fight. Yeah, you can't since, get involved in the river. No, no, you yeah. you want to you want to stay away from. Oh, oh you do want to stay away from that drama, but uh, I've never seen one that uh, got caught up in it, but. Uh, there, there's a big difference, you know, and regular fans, they just go in there, every, everybody gets jerseys. Oh, yeah. Okay? Everybody. And uh, they're out there all day and night partying, getting drunk, mm-hmm. you know, having a good time. I'm not, no, quote me, I'm not criticizing tailgating because I do it too. Oh, it's awesome. So does Ernie. Yes. Okay, we all Done do it. Correctly, it's amazing. Ex- exactly. I, I got my, my ways that I tailgate. Mm-hmm. Okay? Now, if I'm not dressed up, then I will drink. Yeah. But if I'm dressed up, I don't drink, mm-hmm. you know. It's that's that's me. But uh, well, so I think here's the difference right here is being a super fan is like being a professional fan, where you know, like you can't do certain things. You have to go out there and like act as a professional in your outfit, taking care of uh, almost like business. You're actually you know, like part of being a, on the payroll, being part mm-hmm. part of the, the, the organization. A fan can just do whatever the hell they exactly. want. Exactly. You know, exactly. and that's where I think the miss like there's probably a misconception where they think like being a super fan means you're out there being the hardest party or being the craziest person possible. You know, like you're you like being super calm. <laughs> yeah, and like it's it's the total opposite. You know, yeah. so whenever you go from being a regular fan to a super fan, there's like a there's a level of professionalism that has to come with it. Big difference. Mm-hmm. Big difference. Totally big difference. Probably won't you know? even make it into the group if you're not <laughs> no. acting correct. Huh? <laughs> <No>. <laughs> we'll make like it into the group. Pretty tight knit. Yeah. So, but uh, uh, yeah, you know, I I, I just um, feel that there's 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 a ways of doing it the smart way. Uh, if you do it the smart way, you ain't gonna have no problems. 
20 years, I've had no problems at all yeah. whatsoever. I get along with everybody. Mm-hmm. Whether you like me or not, I'll still get along with you. you. You know, that's part of my culture. You know, uh, I was born and raised that way is that, you know what, if you want respect, you got to give it. Mm-hmm. And um, I will be one of the first to say that, you know what, I'm very faithful, very honored, very loyal, and I always respect everybody. I don't care what nationality you are because, you know what, race – Hey, let me tell you something. If you are black, brother, you're you are still my brother. Still I mean, the, the color, thing. the race doesn't matter. Is you give them respect, you're gonna get it right back. It's go, all sir. about giving it back to you. Mm-hmm. Because I I used to work in um, California, yeah. and um, I had to I actually worked for a dairy called Altadena Certified Dairy, and I had uh, my, my territory was Inglewood, Watts, Compton. It was pretty rough, okay? I did you know, leave. you think? You know, it was a yeah, big time. Right? Right. <laughs> it was bad. So, so I used to like the Louisville Cardinals. So I, had a, I had a, war, a red hat one morning. Mm-hmm. Man, they came up to me and they said, you got to get rid of that. You can't wear them colors down here, cuz. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm like, why? He goes, yeah. This is not the red part. This is the it's blue the or yeah, the green or whatever. I'm like, well, then what is the neutral color? And they say black. So the next day I went and got a black one. But, <laughs> there you go. Right but, on. Yeah. You know, it's all about, you know, respecting people yeah. and um, giving respect to others. And if if you can do that, you can have no problem in in your life whatsoever, brother. Yeah, you Nothing. fine, man. Yeah. Yeah. So do you guys want to talk about these boys? I want to hear, we we talked a little bit outside, but what was your take? I'll actually start with you, Ernie, because I want to, let's do you first. What was your take on the last game there? Green Bay Packers. Was the score 41-30, 47-31 or something like that? 36, I think it was. Yeah. Or something like that. Oh, no. It was, it was, it was a lot 32. worse than- it was that, a lot yeah. worse than that, yeah, because, I mean, I know, they scored two, three touchdowns in the fourth know, quarter. Everybody left at a freaking halftime. Yeah, I bet. Dude. That was I embarrassing. I went to the game. I left at, what, end of the third. That's really? embarrassing, yeah, bro. Yeah, dude. That's embarrassing. Yeah, I was doing the shuttle. I was getting calls at halftime. Yeah. Like, That's the most embarrassing game up, I've ever been to. Yeah. You never saw. Mm-hmm. I mean, it was just. And then for Mike McCarthy to say the team wasn't ready. Yes, dude. That it's was It's a, a playoff bad. game. Yeah. How can you not be ready? Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, that just didn't make That's any sense. a coaching sense. issue. If we're not ready, something's up there. Yeah. That, and then, that comes and then from Jerry the wants to keep him again. Mm-hmm. I would have fired him that next. As soon as he man. said that, you're gone. Yeah, that's a dumb thing. Just, <laughs> you know, you're not going to be prepared for the playoff game? Mm-hmm. You know, Mike McCarthy's a liar. Mike McCarthy, you're a liar. <laughs> a strict up liar. You don't. You did not come here to win a championship. You only won one in Green Bay, and you had Rodgers and Farr, and you only won one, and and you got Dak Prescott. Huh? Good luck. Yeah. <laughs> Good luck. They're garbage. Everybody's garbage. So that game, I'll they just that. came out, yeah. and punched in the mouth, you know, and they just went reeling from there, dude. That's just Dak Prescott. You're garbage, like buddy. You need to go, ah. McCarthy. You need to go. They do. Sorry, guys. No, yeah. Get hey, hey, out on the table. Hey, now. bro. Yeah, I gotta. I. I got to speak my mind because I'm hurt, bro. 20 years being a super fan. And, that was our best chance and, right and, there. Absolutely. And not being able to be there since 95? Yes. That's embarrassing, bro. And we're America's team? And 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 we got players like a quarterback that's, that's supposed to be your leader like Dak Prescott that we don't know what game he's going to show up to. Mm-hmm. We don't know. Him or what was it, Dak Isha? That that yeah. <laughs> That's for you, Victor. There you go. And, <laughs> and then another thing, you get this kid, Trey Lance. Mm-hmm. They don't give him a chance. They have yeah. not even given him a chance. There was a couple games you, we were way done, done by like, what, 30 points? They put him in. Put him in, in that yeah. game. Yeah. Never, like, because I heard. saw he wasn't doing it. I heard that Frisco did, or, or, or that they didn't want uh, Trey Lance to know what Frisco does because he used to play for Frisco that would embarrass Dak. I'm like, so I what? Shit. A yeah. W's a W. I don't care, dude. Yes. Yeah. Let's go win the game. Exactly. Yes. I want a W, but but you, you know what? Us diehard fans, man, we're tired of this, oh, man. It hits you we harder, are dude. tired, yeah. bro. And something has to take place now. Or you know what? Jerry, look out, man. 
I don't know how how good the tickets will sell. Well, you know what? Everybody will still go to that game. Exactly. That yeah, thing will still thing. Uh, yeah, That's why nothing changes. Because it's a party place to mm-hmm. party. Yeah. Yeah. This is the most embarrassing thing. Since 1995, only two teams have not been to the NFC Championship. <laughs> oh, no. Yep. Washington and that team across the street, oh, the Dallas no, Cowboys. Oh, no, we're in the same boat as Washington. That's right embarrassing, now, bro. That's, that's embarrassing. Not even one that's in the yes. same. Oh, not even, dude. Not, we can't even get into an NFC championship, more or less the Super Bowl. We can't, we even, can't even win in the first round. Dude, we can't even win in the first round, bro. Well, At home. 12 and 5. Against the sixth seed. 12 and 5 the past three years, and you don't advance? Yeah. We're, what's, we're, we're set up to go to San Francisco NFC championship game. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was that easy. We yeah. had a chance. I mean, it was easy. This was this was the year for us. We had a great chance to to get to the Super Bowl. Mm-hmm. But you know what? Anytime that you lose to a team, what were they eight and nine, something like that? Yeah, and yeah, they, they got they and they in. they came here and gave us an ass whooping, an ass whooping too, dude. Yeah, that's embarrassing. Down three touchdowns in the first quarter, was it? I think something yes. like that. Yeah, it, off two picks, one's pick six, I think. I mean, pull him out. Pull that, him out. That could not hit a lamb's arm, hands if he actually put it right in it. I think now's the time to pull up. What is? What is yeah, you know what? So, mom say? so let's see this. So yeah, Dak's mom or or, or CD's lamb mom criticized Dak, mm-hmm. saying that Dak doesn't need to be there. And then not only did on that, I, I got some more here. Yeah. On the pull up. <laughs> this is um, and, and oh, it's been going off yeah, the last like yeah. two this is weeks. Pretty Everybody's cool. so mad, so, yeah. dude. It's so bad. So a. Uh, that brother said, take the $40 million or pack your bags. Go home. Okay? That's from, that, that's from Terrence Parsons Jr., I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. Terrence Parsons Jr. Oh, okay. That. Okay? This one comes from Dak's b- brother. If I could get Dak to leave Dallas, I would. <laughs> I want him to right now. Oh, no. <laughs> so do we. And then <laughs> Terrence Parsons Jr. says, the greatest, what does that say? The, the greatest I, crimes to this man is being done by his own organization. I'm talking about Micah Parsons. There you go. Oh, man. That's for real, so, dude. So anytime a, a player's mom talks about your, your teammate or your brother's talking about your teammate, come on, bro. I even heard all these ex NFL players on all of the, all of these talk shows, yeah. they're hammering Dak. Everybody's Dak, hammering Dak. They right said Dak's garbage. He don't need. He Those needs to go. Showing like he needs to go. And then for Mike McCarthy to go up there and lie because he wants to keep his job, mm-hmm. he says, "I came here for a reason to to win a, a championship." Huh? Really? The best chance right there. When? Where? That road was paved, man. Like that was the best chance that we we're gonna get. Absolutely. Now, now the question is. Where's Quinn going to go to Seattle? Then we're going to go back to square one with our defense. Somebody was saying uh, Atlanta. Would be Atlanta? Atlanta an option. I heard that uh, was Seattle and um, I think Tennessee was the top two runners right right. now. right. Okay. Yeah, Titans. But, I mean, if we lose Dan and Quinn, um, I mean – Who's going to come in to do our defense? We'll be at square one. I don't want want him to leave, but I also – you want him to take, you know, head coach opportunity, you know. Okay, so so now think about it, guys. Okay, Dan Quinn might be leaving us. Mm-hmm. Get Ron Rivera. What did Dan Quinn do during the Green Bay game? He ran the wrong defense. Yeah, we we never went the zone. We we've zone always the whole did, game. We've always did man. Yes, yeah. and that's what we thrive on, dude. Because we have. Yeah. Why did someone tell him right away? You would think that they they would correct the problem. Yeah. They ran it through the whole game. That's why that's why they were open 20, 30 yards like, What are you trying to do? Were you trying to throw him off or something? Like, uh, like what was the thinking behind that? I think Dan knew that he was going to leave and he said, screw it then. Oh, no. <laughs> I, I, I don't know, know about that. Do like that. I don't know, man. Yeah, hopefully uh, not. Sure. I mean, I hope... I hope that's n- not the case, but but, but it definitely looked what, like something. Yeah, was so up, dude. yes, something was very fishy because we never ran that defense. Mm-hmm. And why would you run it throughout the whole game and not correct it right away? Yeah, go back yeah. to what you come mean. on. Go back to the bread and butter. I mean, we're it doesn't make down, sense. We're already down twenty-one to nothing. Yeah. So might as well What's go back to man. To with, that's been our bread and butter. This, this mm-hmm. running man. Yeah, and they, did, they did the zone, man, dude. Yeah, because um, we got big, physical, fast guys, you know, and like. Yeah. It's a zone. It's like, especially with an offense like that, with a young quarterback that's trying to play, you know, technical. 
Like he's get, he's gonna pick apart zone because that's what he knows. You know, whenever it comes to man to man, like people getting bumped, pushed, routes getting messed up, all that yeah. stuff, you got to do stuff on the fly. That's gonna mess up Jordan Love out there. But you leave him these open pockets and just let him time things up right, which is what he practices. They're gonna pick you apart. You know, it comes down to one thing, and that means that Jerry needs to stay out of it. Hire a general manager. Mm-hmm. Let him run the team. You're the owner. You're not a general manager. You're not a head coach, and you're not the owner. Yep. You're only the owner. Hire a general Get manager and let him run it. Mm-hmm. Also, what, 82? 80? Up there? What? He's yeah. <laughs> he's a, he's getting up there. What will happen? His blood pressure is okay. Well, I, I have no idea, but did you see the look on his face? He was ready to cry. Yeah. Yeah. But again, you don't know if um, that's a put on because us fans, remember, if we don't show up, he don't make the money. Yep. We're the one that makes the money, us fans. But we still keep coming. <laughs> they will always next come, year. bro, because next year. That's we are part. we are the Dallas Next Year Cowboys. Mm-hmm. That's our new name. The Dallas Next Year Cowboys. It's always so next wild. year, next year, next year. I mean it's a it's a been like that since ninety five. Yeah. That's embarrassing, guys. Very embarrassing. Yeah, I was born in ninety six, dude. Like I there haven't you go. seen <laughs> The there you go. Parts of being a Cowboys fan, man. I've just been getting plagued with this shit my whole life, dude. Let me yeah. ask you something. On CD's mom saying that, mm-hmm. there's no way that she just said that. Oh no. Do you think he overheard CD saying that? That's oh, the only thing I can come point. up. You yeah. know. Or, I mean, she's not just gonna. I bet she doesn't. I mean, she might know some football. She's but, got a little inside. Yeah, but something, though. she has to overheard something, and mm-hmm. then. That's why she went off. I'm thinking that's what, oh, I, you know. Yeah. Some, okay, but uh, but again, to answer your question, too, also, that the parents have a part of it mm-hmm. because they follow their, their son, obviously, okay? Yeah. yeah. Being a professional athlete, they're they're going to be part, part of that, okay? So a, a lot of the players' wives are, are always there. Mm-hmm. Some of the moms are, are there. Some of the families are, are always there. So people will see it. People will hear it. It will get back to them, yeah. But... I honestly think that it it came from C.D. Lamb's mom. I mean, I, I can't prove it, yeah. but yeah. but but the way that it, it was said out there inside the news mm-hmm. that it came out like yeah, yeah. And I'd like to hear C.D.'s thoughts on it though. Definitely like to hear some kind of a rebuttal yeah. or something like. Definitely. I, I mean, it just doesn't seem like well, she it's would like come when out and say that. The culture around everything, like it, people's family, parents, all this stuff, are like. They're not down with what's going on, dude. Like, the, yeah. the system around it is crumbling. And that's what it seems like whenever it comes down to the game. It's like there's no fire in there. It's like, especially in that last game, it was like they literally came out. They were, like, like fucking McCarthy said, they were not ready. They came out there, they got smacked in the mouth, and they didn't know what to do about it at so, all. And they didn't have the gumption, like, the they didn't have that fire to, to keep going, to keep yeah. trying, you know? So how are you not ready for a playoff game? That makes sense. Yeah. How are you not ready? Be most ready. Yeah. You gotta be ready, Mark. I'm gonna go back to one playoff game. And Troy Aikman says, and Michael Irvin said, it was their most favorite game. Mm-hmm. It was in San Fran, first quarter. We were down 21 to nothing, just like that. We ended up fighting that whole game. We lost in the fourth quarter within a couple of minutes. Yep. Mm-hmm. But it was one of the best been games. Way better. Yeah. I, I mean, do remember they, that. They still had that fight in them. Well, mm-hmm. well yeah. But so, we had Jimmy Johnson. You're right. So, him, so, yeah. so, again, uh, talking about um, the fight in it, I don't know if there's any heart. Micah Parson plays like an animal 24 7, every single game. I can't say nothing about Micah Parson. He is the beast, okay? Yeah. But, and CD's out there running the rest. Exactly. He's so, doing the, he's so doing the job. I will say that look at when Tony Romo. Broke his ribs in San Francisco at halftime. Came back to beat the San Francisco 49ers. Mm-hmm. That's hard. Yeah. With broken hard. ribs? Mm-hmm. Come on now. That's like, uh, I gained a lot of respect for uh, Justin Herbert. What was it, last year? Whenever it was like first game, he Absol- got yep. cracked in the ribs. Cracked like, ribs. He played the whole rest of the game. He fought yeah. his heart out, man. That kind of shit is <clears> like <throat> something I argue. Like, I just don't I don't see Dak doing. Like, we need the guy that's going to go put himself on the line to go get the fourth. He's going to go. He's going to go dive over and get that touchdown. He's going to do anything. Look at, look at Josh can. Allen uh, Sunday. Man, that guy can he run. Went, yeah. Man, he, mm-hmm. he puts his body on the line. Yeah. He, he, he actually wanted it. All the best yeah, he do. wanted it. Yeah. All the best do. You know, you yeah. got Mahomes out there. If he doesn't see it, he goes and he gets it. Lamar, he goes out there and he gets it. Josh <laughs> Allen, Herbert, everybody. They, they put on – if they – 
if it needs to get done, it's up to you to go get it done, yeah. you know? Okay, and another thing is, you know what? I, I understand that we don't got to run the game. Tony Pollard disappointed me like crazy, man. I thought he, after getting rid of Zeke and, and him taking over, mm-hmm. I thought he was in Tony the, Pollard was my runner. I back. thought he was in the run on, the, run on like a beast. Didn't do nothing. Well, he's Horrible. A, he's a he's a he's a space yeah. runner. You know? yeah. I honestly think that we should go back to the fullback, like yeah. Tony Dorsett and and uh, oh, Smith had. So oh my god, yeah. it would help out Dak a lot from blocking. I mean, come on. <laughs> but, but no, you know our our, our running game. You got to realize the run game opens up the passing game. Yes. Okay, I, I understand that. If you ain't got the running game, you ain't gonna have a, have the best game. Do. Exactly. Yeah. Okay, I understand that that makes a lot of poor decisions because our line. Mm-hmm. Troy Aikman always told Jerry, "You got to be, got to build up that line, got to build up the line." Mm-hmm. You know what? He's absolutely true because, because um, the line is a, like a wall. Yeah. Okay, and if you don't got a line, yeah. you and me would throw. We would make poor decisions too because oh, definitely we don't want to get hurt. Uh huh. Okay, so so I understand that, but you know what? He just makes two stupid. Mistakes, and he does not play up to being a leader for the Dallas Cowboys because yeah. your your quarterback is your leader. Yeah, he's got a C on his chest, and he up. he is not a leader. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because we don't know what Dak's going to show up. Yeah, you know, horrible. Can I heard make- I heard a stat. Okay, in five of his uh, playoff games, in the first half, he didn't have over a hundred yards of passing. In the playoffs, that's embarrassing. He's already he's already going to be what probably thirty thirty one next year. Yeah, yeah probably, I mean, uh, check his hairline. <laughs> I'm sorry, that was mean, dude. That's so bad. I'm so sorry, dude. I got it. Oh that, man, but, oh, I'm sorry. I know you got other shit going on. That's why I was actually. Come on, man. We're was, hammering Dak, but yeah. not that much, bro. Hey, bro, watch yeah. that, man. What, what are you no, saying? No, I had to do it. What? No. What know what you're saying there, buddy? <laughs> Low blow. I, I mean, apologize. Yeah. I mean, I got to stick up for. Back there. <laughs> I do you have know? to also bring up the argument of like you know the mental health things and things like that. that I mean that dude's had a hard road. Yeah, you know like he's had a lot of things happen. Still, in his he's been through a lot like that. Yeah. You know and like going out there and like being the face of the Dallas Cowboys, yeah. the America's team. Like you're under a lot of scrutiny. You know like if, yeah. if we don't know what goes on whenever he goes home. You know True. like True. the person Dak Prescott is. Absolutely amazing. Oh, he's an awesome dude. Yeah, awesome man. The way he talks, you know, is is uh, his mom passing away, and mm-hmm. you know that the way he, he's awesome. Mm-hmm. I mean, I met him. Well, you got a little bit of battle out of you, bro. Yeah, yeah. Now he's gonna be a dad. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes, sir. Oh, yeah, dude. Okay, so I met him twice, and uh, you know what? He's he is a he's a very nice guy. Inside of him, he is a nice guy, but. I don't know if I should use this as an excuse or what, but ever since he injured that leg, he's not been the Dak Prescott. Yeah. Because look he's at when flashes look at when he was at Mississippi State. He ran his ass off. Oh, yeah. yeah. He's not a pocket quarterback. He got it. He's yeah. not a pocket quarterback. He needs to get out of that pocket and run. Mm-hmm. He's afraid to run. He's afraid to hurt, hurt that damn leg again. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So why do we need somebody like that? And he's going to make $40 million whether he goes out and gets it or not. So that's another thing is the reason why they didn't want to sit him down on under the bench while we were getting our butts kicked by 30 points because Jerry says, I'm paying him to be a player, not a cheerleader. Yeah. Put, oh, man. Put a damn skirt on him. I don't give a shit where the money's going. Put the be- put whoever you think is going to do the best right now. We need a W. Game. Yeah, we yeah. need a win. You know, yeah. so I, I, I mean. Screw we'll, your money, Jerry. You got plenty. All right. Exactly. <laughs> whatever. <laughs> You'll be all right. Whatever's going to win you ball games, do it. Yes. You know? I mean, come on now. You, you got to find a way to win. Mm-hmm. Yep. You know, so uh, I just I just don't understand the situation, what's going on. That game was the most embarrassing, horrible game in 20 years of being a super fan of, of, the, of the Dallas Cowboys that I witnessed. But I will say, though, in my heart, I will always be a Dallas Cowboys fan until the day I die. And I will even take it with with me to heaven because you know what, I am a cowboy cowboy fan for life. Remember that I'm a cowboy fan for life. And if if you don't believe me, look at my body. Yeah. These tattoos do not come off. Yeah. they're they're permanent. Mm-hmm. You can change your makeup, your your 
your, your outfit, your, your costume, your outfit, and all that. Stuff, yeah. But you cannot take those yeah. things off. You can turn that. You can turn that fireman something. You can turn it green and gold, or there blue you go. Light, you can turn it whatever. But you but can't tattoos, skin, nah, buddy. nah. <laughs> I mean, that would be a lot of lasering off. And uh, <laughs> I haven't experienced it yet, but I heard it hurts twice as oh, much yeah. more to take them off than it is to put them on. But but now you know what to to be able to uh, give my body to the Dallas Cowboys. It's a uh, it. It was an honor, you know, and uh, I mean, I, I love the Dallas Cowboys, but I'm just tired of it, mm-hmm. fed up, and you know what? I won't pay to go to a game. Yeah. No. Right now? Why? Yeah. Jerry's making money on whatever you wear, your jerseys and all that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Jerry's making money. Mm-hmm. I mean, so Jerry only care, cares what- something back, dude. Jerry only, only cares what comes in and out of the stadium mm-hmm. and what he gets off of merchandise. Yeah. He don't care about Super Bowl team. Why didn't he put together a team like Tampa Bay has done, Kansas City has done, all these other teams has put a team together to, to win the Super Bowl, except for us. Where, where are we at? I mean, we're America's team. Yeah. 95? That's embarrassing, dude. Look at Detroit. What, three years ago, they won three games. Yeah. And look what now Campbell look what did. Now. Yeah. See? Oh, now I love Dan Campbell. Dan Campbell's the beast, yeah, man. I love Dan Campbell. Yeah. I'd love to play for him. Yep. Oh, yeah, dude, that, that dude guy. just looks like he that, would just inspire you, man. That's the type yeah. of coach you need. Uh-huh. You you need a hard coach to come in to coach the Dallas Cowboys. We need Campbell over here at the Cowboys, bro. We need somebody over here because McCarthy's not not definitely cutting it. I'm sorry. Yeah. I mean, his – I wouldn't mind that uh, – His play calling is even Pierce, horrible. Antonio Pierce. Pierce is going too from uh, the uh, Raiders. The Raiders, yeah. yeah but oh, he, he's go. already signed yeah. with the Raiders, but yeah. He, I mean, I would even, fire. Yeah. I, I would even settle with Jim Harbaugh. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> somebody that, that yeah. somebody. I, I mean, come on now, McCarthy's too damn soft. He's just like Jason Garrett, the puppet. Yeah, <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah. But, uh, well, and that was my point earlier about you know, somebody said uh, Belichick coming, and I'm like, Belichick is not going to deal with Jerry. No, nah, so, nah, something comes down from the top, and he doesn't agree. He's like, I'm, I don't have to deal with the bullshit, dude. Kraft yeah. is Kraft is different than Jerry Jones, man. I'm telling you, uh, uh, Bill would, probably wouldn't. I mean, I would like to see him come in because I he can probably change it around yeah. if Jerry lets him. But see, Jerry's the type of person that always wants to put his two cents in everything. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's why him and Jimmy Johnson didn't get along. Yeah, and how are, how are you going to fire a, a coach that brings you back back to back Super Bowls? Come on, yeah, dude. That's uh, a, that's a, then he set up playoff runs every year too. Then he also set up for Switzer too. Yeah, yeah. to, to oh, win it. Yeah. I mean, it's I, it don't make sense, brother. I, I mean, it's it's just horrible. In a, it's in a downhill. It's, it's embarrassing right now, dude. That's why we're going to Mavs games from now on. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. right, bro. Rangers, baby. I Let's go, to, buddy. I took yeah. to the first, first one. Uh, Mavs game uh, last week. Oh yeah. And still been, who man. did I bring down yeah, to meet you? Your favorite, Darren Woodson. His favorite what? Dallas Cowboy. Yeah, that's sick, dude. Yeah, I know what? Darren. I know Darren real well. Mm-hmm. I have him. He's autographed his uh po- his own photo right here on on my left. Yeah, there you go. Left leg, but uh, yeah, yeah he, he happened to be a nice guy. Yeah, damn, dude. Yeah, that I was just that. a spur of the moment. Stars yeah. game too, man. Those stars games sound super fun. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I never been to a hockey game either. Yeah, never. No. Actually, no, I actually haven't. No, I've been to a Rangers game and a Cowboys game. That's it. Yeah, I've been to a Ranger game. No yeah, maps. Yeah. Nah, no maps. Never been. Oh, okay. Yeah, I've never even been to a like professional basketball game at all. Oh, okay. Yeah. We'll have to take him next time. This is so, totally different deal. <laughs> so the the mascot for the Mavs. He's the he was the original rowdy. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh shit. Okay. Yeah. Now he's deep out here, dude. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Brisky. <laughs> Brisky. <laughs> but yeah, you know it's you know I'm just, I mean I don't mean to get too much on the deck, but I mean enough's enough, man. Yeah, absolutely. I am tired of this crap. Yeah. You know, yeah, and 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 uh, people say, oh, it's not Dak's fault. It is Dak's fault. Well, well, not all Dak's fault, but the majority of it because he makes a lot of poor decisions. Mm-hmm. Poor decisions, you know that 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 when shouldn't it comes have been done. To, you are the one that is in charge. Exactly, of the field. you yeah. you are the leader. Mm-hmm. You are the quarterback. Yeah. And who in the heck wouldn't want to be the leader of the Dallas Cowboys? Right Come now. on now, America's yeah, America's team. Yeah. Right it, now? Is, <laughs> it, it is a lot of responsibility. Yeah, yeah exactly. It is, you but know, Trey Lance. But again, <laughs> Cooper. But no, again. Uh, He's getting paid forty million dollars. Yeah, take the job and shut up and do your job. Mm-hmm. Yeah, 
Do your job. Do your job the best. You are getting paid. Do your job or else pack your bags and leave. There you go. Get the hell out of Dallas. (laughs) We don't need you. All right. So on that note, let's get away from this. Let's get away from this for you. Jerry makes me drink. (laughs) Jerry makes me drink. (laughs) drink. Uh, uh, Let's talk. We've had Tattoo Mark this whole time. Let's talk about Mark Shinfield. Yes, sir. Yeah. So Mark Shinfield from California. Yes, sir. Yep. How did it all start for you? Buddy? Well, um, I'm originally from Southern California, Baldwin Park, California, to be specific. Uh, I was born and raised there. Um, I lived there all of my life. Um, I went to high school there and all that stuff. I, I played with the former Cal- Dallas Cow- Cowboys. His name was Gary Allen. Rest in peace, Gary. Um, he, uh, he set the record at University of Hawaii, then Houston Oilers drafted him. He backed up Earl Campbell. Then the Dallas Cowboys got him. He backed up Tony Dorsett. You guys, you guys can Google him up. And yeah. Carry on. And um, I mean, I, I mean, I love California. Yeah. But it was time for me to leave because being a super. Okay, first of all, I lost my entire f- family. We're gonna get in on that too. Yeah. But being a super fan, I'm gonna tell you right now. California wasn't for me. Yeah. There's because being a super fan out here in Texas, it's all year round. Oh yeah, it's the best. I mean, there's always something coming up. Mm-hmm. Over there in California, you only got you only got training camp. Mm-hmm. You know, and 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 I mean, I wanted more. You know, and uh, just to be by myself and all that, I was like, I I I don't got a family no more. I mean, I got to go. Yeah. So 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 I so I packed my bags and I. Came to Texas and and this was so you you worked at uh, you said you were you were a milkman right? yes I was a milkman yeah, and yeah. and Doug our milkman it must have been the mailman or, or the milkman <laughs> <laughs> but yeah babies running around now. <laughs> oh no man I haven't got hit for for child support yet <laughs> but uh, yeah I was a milkman for twenty three years you know um, I started out being a helper. Um, uh, then I got my route. I did home delivery. I did wholesale. Then I went into the plant. I, I started making ice cream, milk, yogurt. Then I was a babysitter. I was a f- foreman for the cooler where, where we used to ship on the milk out and all that. Mm-hmm. And then uh, I end up coming down with a, an illness that the doctors r- retired me early. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. What is, what is that? So, okay, so I lost my whole family through coronary heart, heart disease. Yes, yeah. I do have it now. Mm-hmm. Okay, doctors can't do nothing more f- for me. Uh, it, it's a matter of time. Um, it can be from the time you get diagnosed for 20 to 20 years. Uh, they can't. Time. Yeah, I am on the heart transplant, transplant list. But there's no guarantee because that list is huge. Oh, it's yeah. humongous. And um, I'm going to be honest with you guys. Uh, so I lost my brother a year ago. Mm-hmm. And he only lasted, uh, since when he got diagnosed, he only lasted, what, eight months? Oh, wow. Nine months? Mm-hmm. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a disease that you can feel it. Because there's days that I just lay in my bed all day, don't want to get out of it. Don't want to eat. Don't want to drink. Don't want to do nothing. I have no energy whatsoever. So a coronary heart disease is a de- deterioration of your heart. Mm-hmm. So every day my heart's deteriorating, and yeah, it's yeah. it's going to get at the point where there ain't going to be nothing left, and that's when I'm just I'm going to go yeah. home. I'm going to finally go home, go home to my uh, f- f- family, you know. Yeah. But um, you know what? Um, but again, I'm not that afraid of death mm-hmm. because. God knows what I've been doing and what what I am doing. Mm -hmm. And um, to all you people out there that heard a lot of bad things about Mark, Mark, believe what you want to hear, but you know what? I am telling you from the horse's mouth, I do got a heart, whatever's left. But but you know what? I do love the people. I do care about people. And um, I I just want people to know that when it is my time to go, Carry, carry on my legacy on because uh, you know what um, I just I just l- l- love people and um, I get told Channel Eleven I says you know what I'm ready to go now mm-hmm. 
And uh, they always say, well, well, why do you say that? I said, because I feel it. Yeah. I mean, you, you got to realize, I don't know if you know about this, but when people were dying, they usually give away their stuff, their, yeah. their, their impersonal stuff. They know. Mm-hmm. I can feel it coming. I can feel it's coming. Yeah. Whether it's going to be tonight or next, God forbid, or but, next but year or, or whatever. Years, you know, but, whatever yeah. but I do want to be here for a Super Bowl to win another Super Bowl, please. Yes. I mean, I don't know how much longer that I have to live. I don't. Mm. Okay. And we can all say that because you don't know if you're going to walk out of your house and uh, make it back home. Right. Exactly. You know, when it's our time, it's our time. But when you're fighting a disease, it's different. Yeah. It's just like cancer. It's horrible. It's yeah. not good on you. So you know what? You know what? I I just I don't take life for for granted, and uh, um, I just I just know that it is going to be that time for me to say goodbye to y'all, man. You know? Yeah. Damn. You know, but it, it, but all that's gonna live on, man. Yeah. Just just appreciate life, guys, because uh, and everybody out there, because when you think you got it bad, you really don't, and you know what? I always say that God can give it to you. He can take it right back. I'm a true believer in that. Yeah. And, and, and you know what? Giving back to somebody is awesome, man. Just, just do your part. It's up to them to do their part, man. But um, just keep on blessing people. And, and that's what I want to do. Mm-hmm. And to me, it's all about these kids. Yeah. I mean, I love the Dallas Cowboys. But, the, but, but to me, the kids are above the Dallas Cowboys. I'm yeah. sorry to say that, but yes, they come first before the Dallas Cowboys. Mm-hmm. Sorry to say that. Yeah. And that's huge for you because, I mean, it's been your whole life. So you, uh, I think whenever we talked last time, you said, like, it came really young. Like, when yeah. You so came a Cowboys so I, I was, like, five years old, guys. And back in the days, we used to have um, these plastic helmets with the shoulder pads oh, yeah. on the uniforms. Mm-hmm. Remember? Guy, you're not that old, are you? <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. So, so. My mom bought me a Dallas Cowboy one, bought my brother a Rams one. It had that uh, two bars. Yeah, the two yeah. bars. There you go, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah the Roger Strawback one, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, bought me the Cowboys, bought my brother the Rams one. Um, I just fell in love with that star. Then, of course, one of my high, high school classmates played on for the Cowboys. Um, my first tattoo was graduation. Yeah. Oh, my God. My mom goes, you are nuts. I, ah. She goes, what do you want for a graduation gift? I said, I want a tattoo, Mom. Mm-hmm. No. I said, Mom, I'm 18 years old. Yeah. Okay, let's go do it. <laughs> I'm, I'm like, I mean, Mom was pretty cool. Once I, <laughs> once I convinced her and all that, yeah. but um, my first tattoo was on uh, my right leg with, <laughs> that I still have, on, and it looks very nice because mm-hmm. he's a great artist. It's a picture of a Dallas Cowboy helmet. Yeah. But I tell you one thing, when, what really blew it off when everybody knew me by, by Tattoo Mark was that back. Yeah, that back. That back was yeah. all over the world. Mm-hmm. It's everywhere. There. It's all it's everywhere, baby. Right <laughs> it's all over. But, it's right back there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, um, I used to work out at uh, uh, Planet Fitness in B- Baldwin Park, and the manager went to, uh, I think, Europe or, or something, um, and... There was a girl out there, and she had the Cowboys shirt on. And he, uh, he actually went up there because, you know, that, that I was a Cowboy fan, right? Mm-hmm. So he went up to her and he goes, do you really like the Cowboys? She goes, oh, my God, I love it. Look at my screensaver. Fold open. My picture my, of my back was uh, on, on the nice, phone. Yeah. He went freaking nuts. Yeah. He goes, There's no way. Yeah, dude. Yeah. Call him right now. So, yeah. so, so she actually showed him a picture of me. And she goes, oh, I want to meet him. I want to meet him. Oh, hell see, yeah, dude. See, that's another thing is, you know what? Because of my, now I'm not making myself look, look good because I, I treat people very nicely. Yeah. Okay. Because I got a heart. Okay. Uh, because of my personality, I know people. But I don't know exactly who they are because they know me through the organization. Right. That's that's what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. You stay clean with the organization, being a super fan. People, I mean, you don't need to advertise yourself. People are going to get to know you mm-hmm. by word of mouth. Right. And, and, and they see me on music videos. I did a Bank of America commercial for the Cowboys. Yeah. I mean, so... so I am out there. They they see me on TV, all of the games that I go to. But um, just just to be out there and knowing people that I don't really personally know personally is a blessing. Yeah, you know, and 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 for them to respect me like that, oh man, 
That's huge. Yeah, that is very huge. When man. was that? That was, um, gosh, uh, so I've been out here four years, five years. Uh, I'm going to say it was uh, about 15 years ago. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay, yeah. That's it's what's a, up. It's yeah. been a while. Mm-hmm. But uh, uh, it's it's an honor. It's a blessing yeah. to uh, be able to uh, represent the Dallas Cowboys. Mm-hmm. When it comes to, comes down to it, and I don't know why Mrs. Price has not got fan of the year, damn it. Yeah. <laughs> Jerry, get Mrs. Price a fan of the year. She yeah, needs to get on there it. There you go, dude, yeah. How are you going to pick a guy that n- no one knows him? I mean, James Wright. Wait, who was it? Uh, s- some guy from another state. I don't know. He's only been to a couple Cowboy games here. Right? I, I don't know. Interesting. I don't know how he got it. But James Wright, last year, Superman, mm-hmm. he deserved it. Yeah, that's definitely right. deserved it. I mean, mm-hmm. he has a heart. Mm-hmm. He's a good man. I mean, I I know him personally. That man calls me every day, checking up on me. Yeah. He's a very good man. Sue, man, I love you, brother. Good job, bro, man. There you go. Hell I hope yeah. I hope all of them, these fan of them, fan of them, the year follows your footsteps, brother. Mm-hmm. You know, <laughs> but uh, no, nah, man, he, he's a good guy. He deserves. People ask me, Mark, how come like, how come you haven't got it in twenty years? Let me tell you something, guys. That is a good question, actually. If I get it, I get it. If I don't, it don't bother me. Let someone else enjoy it. You haven't sold enough teddy bears no. yet. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let me make some more Let's get calls some teddy here. bears. Yeah, so some bears this here. man can get but, a fan of the year. Let's but, go, dude. But you know what? It would be an honor to get it, but mm. but if I don't get it, I I am not going to be disappointed. Yeah. I am not going to be disappointed. No matter who gets it, I'm going to be proud of them. And I I will always be behind them. Because you're 100%. the same team. Exactly. Yeah. So you also didn't know this, that I am one of the OG's original super fan. Mm-hmm. I'm I'm one of the five that started this. Yeah. Okay. Wow. So, so it was Mrs. Price, mm-hmm. Wrecking Ball, me, Slim, and Frenchie. We started the super fan thing. And then now there's like a million of them now. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> yeah. 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 They pack out the Miller Lighthouse nowadays. Oh, yeah. But, I got a question for you, Mark. Has the same tattoo artist did all your tattoos, or has it been various tattoo artists? Uh, that is a good question. It's been pretty much the same one. His 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 name is Lalo Ramos in California, and then I had I was used guy here in Texas. His name's Miles Bryant. Good guys in Ulysses, you know, very good guy. You yeah, probably know him, guy. yeah. What? That's wild. Yeah, yeah. Miles did did cut my tattoos. I think he might be related to my fiance, dude. If I'm not mistaken, uh, is a wife Brandy? No, I'm not. I, I wouldn't know like that. Okay, name, but yeah. I mean, her last name's Bryant, and they said that they had somebody in the family. I want to say and it wasn't far off. That's crazy. That might be the guy. That's crazy. But oh, I'm gonna have to ask about that. Yeah, Logan. but so, so that guy Lalo is the one that did the one on your back. Yeah. He, yeah. He, he, How long I, did you sit? Huh? How long did you sit? Nineteen hours. Shh, one one session. So basically, you're a psycho, dude. Well, <laughs> We stop. I ate. We did some more. We stop. We <laughs> right. Because because after like five hours, mm-hmm. you start getting weak and dizzy. So, so you got to put some protein back into your system because it, it drains yourself. Yeah, because okay? you're running on adrenaline. I just didn't want to come back, mm-hmm. you know, and and finish it because once once they break the skin again. to go back and do it again, it even hurts more. So yeah. so uh, you're the going on a scab. Yeah, the back was nineteen. The ribs were like fifteen each. The stomach. Took 12 and the chest here was eight and then 15 hours I, on your ribs yeah man. bro well it's different for you yeah <laughs> look at that body <laughs> right you know, okay yeah. cut, it, cut it in half there you go okay yeah <laughs> that's a lot that of mine goes straight to the ribs buddy yo <laughs> a lot of hours bro you know yeah. and and uh, that's another thing i invested a lot of money yeah in tattoos my outfit games all that stuff i mean you should have did like that you got uh yeah, I got they put, put down in, for yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, with with yeah, all of them, that money that I spent, with all that money that I spent, I probably could have bought a house. <laughs> I pretty yeah, close. You could at least oh, yeah. put a good solid down good, payment. Good on down that payment, yeah. Good, good solid down <laughs> now out here, yes, but in California, forget it. This oh, is no way. too damn expensive out yeah. out there. But um, just getting that yeah. way out here too. But but yeah, you know, I actually invested um, a, a lot of money in the tattoos, and people ask me. Are you you going to get more? I think I'm pretty much done. The only thing that I really want is I have a few more players on me that need to sign them, and then I get them tattooed. But that, to me, means more to me than getting, like, a football. Who do you need? We need this one. 
We need six. Oh, yeah, man, we need <laughs> six yeah. of Super Bowls. That's actually yeah, the most important dude, thing right there. Exactly what we I mean, it, yeah. I can't. Shit, I'll get one, too. <laughs> dude. Let's go. I'll but, get one if we get a Super Bowl for sure, dude. I've been waiting 27 years for this shit, man. This is crazy, man. But, but no, you, you know what? I, I pe- probably wouldn't get another one because the older you get, the less pain tolerance that, oh, that, yeah, that you, yeah. you have. And, I'm what sixty four, sixty three. I mean, I I can't handle it sometimes. Yeah. I mean, I have a hard time walking up on the damn stairs. Yeah, right, oh my god, oh, man. man! I'm like the only reason why I picked it up here because when I walk out my balcony, I see Jerry's World right there in front yeah. of me. I mean, I mean, I'm in an ultimate. I mean, I got people from California that been over here already, and they said, "Oh my god, Mark, you're right here." I'm yeah, like, "Yes." Yeah. So what better? Anybody that goes to that stadium sees this. What better than a super fan to have a good spot like this? Come on now. Yeah. Yep. I mean, it's perfect. I don't have to pay to park. That's another investment, though. Yeah. Yeah. I I don't have to pay to park. I don't have to, you walk to, across to the fight the traffic. Right? Oh, dude. <laughs> Nothing, man. You know? So, but, <laughs> That's crazy. But yeah, you know, so, I mean, it's kind of sad that I was lucky to get this place because the guy that used to have it, mm-hmm. was he, he used to work as a like an usher at the Stadium. Mm-hmm. He died of COVID, but not here. He died inside the hospital, and okay. then I was able to get it. Wow! Okay, that's yeah, the only reason why. Yeah. The reason why I got because I heard that he had like a he built his patio out there like a like a like a like a man cave party oh, out there, so that that he can do his tailgating up in there too. You yeah, know, <laughs> so you took that and ran with it. Yeah, yeah I'll let you go. <laughs> but yeah, man, I. I well, so I do want to ask, did you, uh, I think you said you played football in high school. Yes, I did. Not. Yeah, did you have aspirations to go play? Uh, did like I? On a, at a higher level? Like, did you want to be a cowboy? Well, or did I did because, you know what, I love football. Mm-hmm. F- football was everything to me. Um, but then I seen how small I was. And there's guys like three times bigger than oh, me. Bro, I mean, huge, yeah. yeah, I mean, where where do the parents get them the food to feed them? Yeah, <laughs> they got to work a lot of overtime, baby. Oh, yeah, you know, but but no, the, these kids are beasts. And then being from California out here, these these kids in Texas, oh my God, some of those high school guys look like freaking... They're grown men. Dude, yeah. They, are, dude. they actually those, look like, like... high school playoff games, you're like, this yeah. looks like a college. Team. Some of them look like professional football players, man. Yeah, dude. That is crazy. So <laughs> I'm like, you know, so... It all changed, but back in the days, um, when I grew up playing football, it it wasn't the size; it it was your speed. Yeah. So it's how quick you get off the line mm-hmm. versus to be able to block. Yeah. Okay. Blocking that has, has a good part of it, but back in the days, it was your quickness. Okay. Yeah. That's that's what counted. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Look know? at Jerry Jones; he played at Arkansas. Yeah. That's right. You yeah. know, I'm sure he wasn't, but five eight and one sixty or something. Mm-hmm. You know? Exactly. Yeah. Jimmy Johnson played on the same team. Yeah. So, so that's wild. So I did. Yeah, that's that's how they crazy. became okay, friends. Right on, they go. Yeah. They go back all the way. To I would. Like, I want to hear about it because I know they had beef and all this stuff, and like they, they, he finally got him into the Hall of Fame this year. Yeah. I was at a. I think I was having a drink over at Fridays whenever it happened. They didn't have the sound on, so I didn't get to hear his speech or anything. Yeah. But I saw everybody was all emotional around it and yeah, stuff. And I need to go back awesome. and look at it. But <laughs> that was awesome. Finally, well, one last thing I had to say. How about them Cowboys? <laughs> That was funny, man. <laughs> they actually tried to mess yeah, up his hair. Yeah, he, that 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 hair is not going to move, man. <laughs> he has he has concrete on, on that thing, man. Yeah. But uh, uh, no, it, it was kind of nice to see him get in. He just took too long to get him in there. You know, uh, he he should have been in there a lot sooner. And um, but um, Jerry's Jerry. Yeah. Jerry's so Jerry. you know, when it comes down to Jerry's Jerry. Mm-hmm. He makes all the decision whether we like it or not. Mm-hmm. It's his team. Top to bottom. Exactly. He's going to run it the way he wants to run it. Yeah. Not the way that we want him to run it or how how we think he should run it. It's up to Jerry, and Jerry yeah. didn't do and what Jerry wants to do. Garrett's and McCarthy's and people Mark, that play uh, the game with him. Weren't you a mascot for uh, some team or something? Yeah, dude. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, I remember that. So yeah. I, was a, I, was, I was a professional, a professional <laughs> Mascot, I I still got the gear because mm-hmm. you saw it on Halloween. Yeah, that's what I mean. <laughs> sick. Yeah. So, a professional mascot inside their heads, it's it's impossible to keep that thing on all the time. Yeah. We got fans in them. Oh, really? So, yeah. 
So there's fans that you charge up by what is it, USB, USB and yeah. all that. Mm-hmm. And they usually last around like 12 hours. So at halftime, they got their own little locker room. They go in there, take the head out, and they charge it up for a little bit more. Mm-hmm. But um, you actually have a mouthpiece in it. Yeah. So that you can't talk. Because mm-hmm. no mouth, no mascot talks. Yeah. You never see Rowdy talking. Mm-mm. He never talks. Yeah. You can't talk. Okay. And and being a talker that I am, I had to have the yeah. mouthpiece super glued in my mouth. I swear for real, dude. Yeah. It was crazy because cause I, I had tried to talk and they said, no, yeah. you can't talk. Well, you're also very animated with like your hand gestures and things like yeah. that. Yeah. Well, so that plays but, into that. You know? But yeah, I, I, I did the LA Wildcats for what? Six games, and then the COVID started, and then they shut oh, them down. Oh, really? And uh, um, that's when, uh, was it The Rock had it? No, no, it it was that wrestling guy. Uh, yeah, The Rock. Steve McMahon. Steve McMahon owned oh. it. He claimed bankruptcy, and everybody lost everything. Oh, damn. Oh, okay. I even got my f- football signed by the president of the L.A. Walkers, mm-hmm. she she what, loved what me, is man. That? Is that a uh, XFL team or is that what is that? It's 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 actually like minor league. It's actually right before they go into the NFL. Okay, it's one step so below the, the NFL. Similar to like the XFL, USFL. Yeah, 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 yeah okay, something yeah. like that, yeah. right? Oh, okay. What were they calling that? Was that was that the, like the original USFL or no. something like that? Or, no, no, no was it, that I think it was the original XFL. Okay. XFL. Yeah, yeah. Done Jim it a McMahon. couple of times. Yeah. You know, Jim yeah. McMahon owned it. Mm-hmm. Jim McMahon. Yeah, yeah. No, so not G- Steve. Steve. Steve McMahon. Yeah. Steve. Who's on the wrestling guy? Yeah, Steve. Steve. Yeah. Okay. Jim yeah, McMahon. Jim McMahon. That's, that's quarterback. A, that's quarterback. And then now yeah, the that's quarterback. That's where, that's where that came yeah. from. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. But now they got the, at least we got one champion here in Arlington. Bro, yeah. They even got yeah, Arlington yeah, Renegades. Renegades, man. Yes, sir. So. We got that, and then we brought a. Brought a World Series back to it, buddy. Yeah. yeah. I was awesome. praying to God, man. You know what? We can get a World Series, but or, or actually a Super Bowl championship. Super Bowl but uh, I don't see that coming anytime soon, guys, to be honest either, with you, man. man. Sorry to I say that. I don't see us even getting nah. as good of a chance next year, the year after, or anything like that, dude. This was our like paved road. This was our best chance right here this year. But perfect. Yeah. And it looked even during the game, like we were down three touchdowns. I was like, "No, dude, it's gonna be one of those stories, you yeah. know." Like they come back and they, and then just no <laughs> fight at all, dude. Just took the whooping. Sad. Yeah, it is sad, you know. <laughs> and <laughs> and you talk about sad. Look where I stand, oh, bro. No, where were you during the? You were <laughs> crying. Yeah, <laughs> he had gone to the bathroom at this. Point. I got the hell out of there, man. Did you? Um, I I just I I came back home and. I just said, you know what? Actually, you know what? I went to Boomer Jacks because I, I that's another thing we need to do. We need to do a podcast on the, the sheriff. He's on the great big horse. And uh, <laughs> they called the owner down there because I brought the sheriff into Boomer Jacks. Uh-huh. Did you see that? No, uh-huh. b- bomb shells, I mean. Do, do you, oh, know bomb shell. Shell. you know okay, what yeah. sheriff is, right? Bomb Sheriff's a, a horse. big horse. You know that horse that I've been in <laughs> to Walmart? He uh, goes on in the beer he bars. All, oh, I thought you meant like the actual sheriff. No, no, he's not a called the sheriff the horse. It's okay. a horse. He's a service horse. Okay. Okay, so he was so, inside bombshells. Ah, <laughs> so that's sick, dude. I brought him in the bombshells, mm-hmm. and they went crazy. They called the owner. Yeah. He came down, and the guy that owns the horse has paperwork. Said, and the the owner said, okay. That's crazy. You, That's you cannot horse? you cannot turn down a service animal. animal whatsoever. That's a yeah. felony. You'll go yeah. to jail. Oh man. Is it a very is a well behaved horse? Though? Oh, it's an awesome horse. Yeah. <laughs> I mean I mean uh, I got on it, all the waitresses got on it. Everybody on that side came over to our side. Oh hell yeah, dude. Literally into a whole party now. It, it was funny, man. You know, <laughs> but yeah, yeah, that was a lot of fun. So though. He got the hell out of there. He went down to bombshells, <laughs> had him a good time, hung out with sheriff for a little while. <laughs> hung out with the sheriff. Oh man. Yeah, but he he's actually uh, he's actually a really good horse. You know, mm. uh, that's so crazy, dude. I can't believe they let put him in. Well, he went in the restaurant. Mm-hmm. That's amazing. There, Ernie, where were you for all this? Am I on it? That's crazy, dude. <laughs> That's a big ass horse, dude. Yeah. <laughs> Yo, <laughs> he even he even as big as a TV. Look at he has my blue shoes nice, on, dude. There you go. <laughs> he has my yeah. Blue shoes on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was actually see here is right here. 
Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah, like, she's great, Arnold. In the fucking restaurant. That's yeah. so crazy, dude. <laughs> so, you know what? Uh, but I don't know. You know what? I, I, I just want to say that, you know what? As of right now, guys, I don't take life for granted, man. I mean, I, I, I live... I live every day to the very fullest mm-hmm. because I don't know what tomorrow's going to bring me. Damn right. And uh, uh, I just just got to tell you guys, just do what you guys got to do. You guys are grown-ass men. Make your wise decisions. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, if you have family, appreciate your family. If you're having problems with them, brothers, put it underneath the bridge and let it go. Because let me tell you something. When they go, it ain't going to be the same. Bro, I spend every single holiday by myself with um, my dog. I went to Denny's for Thanksgiving. That sucks. Oh, it yeah. sucks, bro. Yeah. I have no family whatsoever. Zero. None left. So if you guys have family, you're very lucky. Yeah. Appreciate them. And you be be very blessed and very thankful, guys. Because you know what? People say, oh, yeah, your mom and dad are with you. There's a difference. Mm-hmm. I can't have dinner with my mom and dad because they're in heaven. Yeah. I'm in hell. Come on, really? Yeah, right, yeah. <laughs> I, so, can't have, I can't have dinner with them. So what you, was your relationship like with, with them before? I had a though? great relationship. Yeah. My dad was a cop. My mom, my mom was a cook manager, just attorney and all that stuff. And, and um, I, I lived under a, a law enforcement family. Yeah. Okay. I don't do no drugs. I drink occasionally. But I knew from right from wrong because I knew if you do screw up, what, what are the consequences, consequences going, to, going to be? So, so I never did anything. When we were under my mom and dad's roof and we had our license, my dad would run record checks on us. If we didn't tell him that we had got a ticket, he would pull our license from us. Oh, wow. That's crazy, bro. Yeah. We had to be in when the streetlights were on. Oh, my God. Strict family. Yeah. We're Italian family. Mm-hmm. We're very family oriented. I mean, there's nothing left, but yeah. Yeah, we're, we were very family oriented. The holidays used to be huge. Now it's zero. Um, Are you the only child? The only one left, yeah. Yeah. You know, I... I, I yeah, you said you had a brother in this. Yeah. I mean, I, I just don't know how to tell people, man. If you're having family problems, let the shit Go, excuse my language, let it go. Mm -hmm. Because you know what? Tomorrow might not be promising for you. Because if they go, you're going to say, oh, I wish I would have done this. Well, you know what? If if you wish, do it now. Yeah. Yeah. Come clean now. It's never too late. Mm -hmm. It's never too late. You don't know what's going to happen, dude. You don't, man. You you don't know, bro. You know, so be be very blessed and be very thankful Mm -hmm. for what you got. Yeah. Absolutely. Am right. Take it. Take that to heart, guys. Yeah, yeah. You know, so I mean, I don't know what to say, man. But uh, just, <laughs> I I am actually very blessed to be here still with you, mm-hmm. and um, I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart for everything that you've done for me or are doing for me that want to do and stuff for me. Mm-hmm. I want to thank you for being my brother, bro. I want you both. Thank you for b- believing in me, and um, um. Well, touch it. You're, f- you're fucking awesome, dude. You know, <laughs> if I do go in and I do go, and you, you're walking down the street and you're hearing someone behind you, you look back and no one's there. That's gonna be me watching over you guys, man. Yeah. I mean, I love you guys, man. Mm-hmm. I, I I will be your angel, man. You know, and um, let's get this dude a Super Bowl, man. <laughs> Golly, come on, dude. Something yeah. do it for Tattoo Mark, bro. <laughs> Do, do it for the Cowboys, man. There you go. Okay, yeah. He's too humble. Just, he won't let it. He won't take it. But I, I don't want to take all winning, the credit. Like but. winning, the, yeah. winning the Super Bowl, and then that's when you go. Yeah, <laughs> but I mean, that would be cool. That'd be the way to do it. So, so or I, you're getting another tattoo, like you said. Your pain tolerance just gives out or something, you know. So I do got a Dallas Cowboy casket picked out. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. So I'm all ready to go. Yeah. Hey, you know. when we win the six Super Bowl, he's gonna be like post Malone. <laughs> yeah, it on his really face gonna somewhere. be done for. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's that's a lot of questions that I used to get. People said, "Do you have room for the sixth one?" Let me tell you something. 
I'm in the fighting room for that damn shit. Yeah, the I'm in the fight that six one. That six one's going on my body. Yeah. yeah shit, right? Hell yeah, yeah, man. Run, run, run the big old forehead, but yeah. but but no. Believe me, as long as we waited this long, I'm in the fighting room for that damn thing. And I tell you what. Yeah. Hell yeah, um, dude. Uh, <laughs> All right. So let's go ahead and let's talk a little bit more. Let's go back to um, what you have going on now because I want to reiterate where people can help you what you have going out into the world that they can get involved with and how they can do that, right? Basically is giving back to the community. Mm-hmm. First of all, I, I don't care if it's teddy bears, toys for tots, or, or cleaning or volunteering, whatever. Whatever you got to do, do it. Mm-hmm. Do what your heart tells you to do. I mean, it's it's not to do it to, to show people who you are. You're doing it from what your heart's telling you to do. Everything that I do comes from my heart. I can only speak for myself, okay? I do what my heart does, tells me to do, and uh, my heart is give back to the community. Give back to people that n- need help. Uh, whatever you got to do. Um, unfortunately, I don't have a lot of money because I'm permanently disabled, so I have a disability check. That's all that. That's, that's all I get that covers this, this uh, rent over my head, and I'm very thankful, very blessed that I'm getting that, mm-hmm. okay? But I don't have a lot of money to give back to the community, but I do volunteer my time and everything. Whatever you got to do, do it, you know, because people s- see that, and that's why you see these players doing charity work. Mm-hmm. It, 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 it tells it more about them. It's not about they're doing it for the Seahawks or they're doing it for the Cowboys. Yeah. They're, they're doing it for their foundation because yeah. it's for charity it, 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 it don't go in their pocket it goes to a good cause yeah Absolutely. and they're using what little yeah. time that they have it's like kind of the opposite like you have what you need like your needs are met as far as as far as like monetarily and stuff but you have time to give whereas they they have plenty of money but they just don't have time exactly you know? and so what they can do with that time speaks a lot to their priorities right yeah go where your heart where your priorities are you know and and uh um any way that you can bless somebody, mm-hmm. you got to do it, man. Because you know what? Like I told you guys before, God can give it to you, and he can take it right back. Mm-hmm. I'm a true believer in that, yeah, 100%. You know, and I speak from my heart. Yeah. Um, I am Italian, like I said, and obviously some, sometimes my mouth gets me <laughs> into trouble. But you know He's what? He's an outspoken hey, gentleman. <laughs> if we'll put I don't beat around on the bush. Yeah. I I come out and tell it like it is. That's the way my mom was. Yeah. I mean, I mean, my mom was hardcore, you know, and, and she got me into a lot of problems. I mean, <laughs> I would be driving her to the mall and all that, and she'd be flipping off people. I'm like, Mom, oh, you don't know, you don't know if they got a gun in them, their, their glove box or anything. Right. You can't be doing all that stuff. But, crazy, actually, but, dude. but, let's get that Italian fire in her. She room. was, she <laughs> had that Italian fire. That's where I get um, that from. It ain't that I'm, um, hard headed. Is this that? I like it done the right way. Yeah. You know, and, and there's a right way and then there's a wrong way. And I, I do it, like I said, whatever I do comes from my heart. It ain't for publicity. It ain't for me to be well known, whatever. I can care less about that stuff anymore. Yeah. What cares about me is giving back to the community. That's more important than anything. And whatever you gotta do, whatever you gotta do, do it. Do it what your heart tells you to do. Right, Ernie? Absolutely. I've been donating these past, I started about 12 years ago. You know, I would, I don't know if you're familiar with Mission Arlington. I so, am actually, yeah. Yeah, they mm-hmm. deliver my, uh, meals on Thanksgiving. and uh, then uh, Are they the ones that do uh, Saturday mornings once a month? I think they do, uh, they put together sandwiches and stuff over at Boomer Jacks. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's right, yeah. And then uh, I've been doing that about 12 years, and then... For uh, Christmas, they do uh, bike deliveries for less fortunate families. Mm-hmm. So I've been doing that for the last 12 years. And like Mark says, I mean, it's just all about what your heart is telling you to do. Mm-hmm. You know, and I don't, I'm not publicity known like Mark is, but it doesn't matter to me. I just do it from my heart. And I love the, seeing the kids' expressions when you deliver a bike and, and their face is just like, like Mark when he delivers those teddy bears, they're it's just, unbelievable. Yeah, you know, dude, they yeah. just smile from ear to ear, and mm-hmm. it's just your so, heart. Your heart is is really so, mattered, man. So he, yeah. it's awesome. He can re- relate to what I'm talking about. There's one thing to collect stuff, mm-hmm. but to make the deliveries, 
Brother, you have no idea. Yeah, it, when you see it, it light him up, dude, like you said. It, mm-hmm. it gives you the chills. I'm knowing that what you've done for someone that has never had anything that can never afford it. Mm-hmm. And to be able to put a smile on their faces. And it's yeah. no real skin off you either. Like you exactly, like it wasn't bro. anything super crazy, you know, like you yeah. didn't bankrupt yourself to do it, you know, like you took a little bit of time, probably a little bit of money, and you helped where you could. Yeah. You know, and like that it could affect somebody's life in that way. Like I wasn't well off as a kid, and like if somebody showed up with a bike like that, dude, I would have lost it. <laughs> yeah. That would have just changed everything at that point, dude. But yeah. yeah. That, that, that's gotta be nice. Yeah, it's an awesome. Yeah. So now I'm with a golf organization, so mm-hmm. This past year, we gave out six thousand mm-hmm. dollars, six one thousand dollars scholarships. Nice. So all it, it's everything's just by donation, and mm-hmm. then we raise money as well. So I mean, again, it's just giving back to the community. Yeah. You know, it's not anything extraordinary, but one kid with a thousand dollars is you know better than not having it. Yeah, that's for sure. Yeah, it's, you know, at least by like books or something. Or anything. Exactly. Like, yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, every little bit helps in that situation, man. Yeah, you know because you all know that buying books and stuff like that—that's costly now. Mm-hmm. I mean, back in the days it was really cheap, but now things are expensive now. You know, wild, dude. And, and and you know these kids need an education. Mm-hmm. They, I mean, I always say, hey, if you can't go to college, go in the service, mm-hmm. get a free education through the service, let them pay for everything, and then come out. And you'd be smelling like a rose. Yeah, there you go. Learn some discipline while you're at it. Too. You know, because because a lot of these kids, they don't have, they don't have a clue what they want to do, mm-hmm. and they don't realize high school goes by quick. After your after your freshman year, you only got three more years left, and those three years go by quick. And then oh, yeah, you're yeah. on your own when you get that paper from the principal and says goodbye, and they don't know you. You're on your own. It's yeah. a different world out there. Mm-hmm. I mean, because those those teachers in college, they don't care if you you, you, you come to class. Up at all, dude, yeah. No, been paid. no, exactly. Yeah, so, so, so you're a grown ass man or or a grown old woman. Uh, you need to start thinking about your priorities. Mm-hmm. Where where are your priorities at? What do you want to do? Yeah. I mean, where where are you going to stand in the next ten or twelve years? Well. I'm a big advocate for taking the time to figure that out, though. Like, being pushed straight out of high school into college like that, I don't think that is the way to do it, really. Because, I mean, I didn't know what the hell was going on whenever I was 18. I was 17 whenever I graduated, really. And so I came out, and I was like, I guess I'm going to college. And then I went, I changed my major like three times because I didn't I didn't give a shit about engineering, dude. <laughs> you know? And then, you know, just kind of life hit me super hard, like, in my college years, and it just didn't end up working out. So, I mean, it doesn't work out for everybody, but, I mean, I learned some shit while I was there, and I can't say it was an awesome experience, but it was an experience, you know, so. Well, Tri- you, trials and tribulations. That's right. Well, it's, a, it's actually better than, than running the streets, you know, well, that's and right. then yeah. getting pregnant that's or doing drugs and getting caught up with them, the, the, the wrong circle you're in, you know. Mm-hmm. I, I mean, I always say either college or or in, or in the service, yeah, you know. So I, coming out of high I think school, his daddy might have been a cop. <laughs> he was coming out yeah. of high school. Rest I didn't know what dad. I was going to do, and I graduated at seventeen. Mm-hmm. So uh, I went to the Marine Corps, and there you uh, go. I did. I served eight years out there. Mm-hmm. Thank you for but, your service. Uh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. So uh, it's just you didn't know what I, I didn't know what I was going to do. Yeah, yeah, right. So yeah. I mean, I w- after going with some friends to go visit colleges, I was like. Damn, I should have went to college. Yeah. <laughs> seeing all them pretty women out there. Exactly, dude. But yeah. then I got to California, and I seen those California women. Mm-hmm. No joke. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You had that GI money in your pocket. Yeah. You but know? hey, wait a <laughs> Ernie, Ernie, Ernie. These women over here in Texas, they ain't no joke either, man. I'm telling oh, you that. Ooh, right. boy. I know, that's right. Uh-huh. I just don't know how to do those two steps or nothing that. But I should <laughs> got my... I got to get some shit, shit kickers in. Get some jeans <laughs> and go on out there, dude. I was going to go to Fort Worth. Go to Dallas is a different story. Yeah. Really. yeah. But, but you know what? I... I always uh, go, go on TikTok sometimes, and mm-hmm. big mistake because you see a lot of junk on there. But oh, it's ridiculous! Yeah, but I just I, I mean, I pass some time by you know, I have nothing to do, so I go on that. And uh, man, I s- see these girls, they're in their boots and all that, and they do the electric dance or what's it called, the electric slide or something like yeah, that. Electric yeah. slide, and there's a place in Louisville, and there's one in Fort Worth, man. And 
That place gets packed, man. Oh, they're, they're jumping over there. Man, dude. those girls are just almost half naked. I'm like, back yeah, in the dude. day. Hey, back in the days, bro. Hey, so do you. You don't even have nothing <laughs> to cover in your back. Hold that cut out, dude. Yeah. <laughs> what are you talking about? Indecent exposure. Oh, let's go. That's indecent exposure, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nah, now, you know what? The way the girls dress now, man, back in the days when I grew up, man. Girls never wore shorts that oh, short, no. bro. Hey, I'm not, I'm not complaining. I'm not complaining I either. I mean, I love the scenery, but... I, I'll but, tell you um, what, the best invention ever is those yoga pants. That's yeah. the best invention ever. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> By far, definitely. But, but yeah... You, it keeps it tight, too. You know? Yeah. <laughs> it, sh- it shows those nice curves and all. Uh-huh. <laughs> this old man can look, but, but please don't, give, don't even give me a heart attack. Deal, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, <laughs> yeah but... Oh, man. But yeah, yeah, the women over in California are, are good, man. And uh, I do miss Cali. You know, I I miss definitely the weather out there because here in Texas, this weather is bipolar. Dude, it's oh my god, it's crazy place. out here. You know, but but I do miss Cali. Um, I miss a, a lot of people out out there. You know, and um, I mean a lifetime of people. You know, yeah. You know, you know, I, you know, I lived with the f- family that I truly miss. You know, and um, they were there for me when my mom, dad, and dad, everybody died and all that. And I, I got to give a shout-out to Monica Clemens and Luis Garcia. Luis, I did mention your name, even though we have, we had our difficulties. Yeah, but, right. but I just yeah. want to thank you two guys for taking me in, in into your household, man. I love you guys. And uh, uh, you guys will always be in my thoughts and prayers with Luis and Monica. That's where it talk, he talks about uh, if you got some shit. You know, let it go. You know? Let it go, man. I'm telling you, you know. Still love, man. Life is t- too short, bro. I'm telling you. I mean, we're not kids. We're grown-ass adults. Yeah. I mean, we don't need to play like, act, act like kids. Yeah, there you Being go. a grown-ass man, come out. If if I'm wrong, brother, I am not admit. I'm not about to admit it. There are guys that won't admit it, mm-hmm. that that will play, play the role and all that. Nah, I come out and say, hey, you know what? I screwed up. I'm sorry. It's up to you to forgive me. Mm-hmm. Bingo. Done. It's over. Yeah. How? What is so hard but saying, I'm sorry? That's huge, dude. If you do that, I mean, you've done everything. You but a lot of people won't do that, though. Out, though yeah. but, but a lot of people won't say, I'm sorry. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and and then when a person says, you're sorry, the other person gets to learn to forgive them. Mm-hmm. So there's two, two sides of the story. Yeah. I'm sorry to forgive them. Mm-hmm. You know, and, um, you know, um, I don't know, but. Yeah, you know, I do miss California and missing the people out there. Um, I Did you go to a training camp out in Oxnard, Thousand Oaks? Yeah. Thousand Oaks too? Uh, yes, I did. Yeah. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I remember they, yep. they were there for... Yep. They were at uh, Cal Lutheran too. Yeah. Yep, yep. Oh, a- absolutely. Yeah. Go back in the days before you... you were, yeah, right. You, were yeah. Even, <laughs> you weren't even thought of, bro. You yeah, weren't even inside dude. the oven, bro. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> you, weren't even, you weren't even in, in inside the oven yet, bro. Where now they do it in a... Uh, Oxnard. Oxnard, okay. Oxnard, yeah. 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 That's a nice facility, you know. Um, it's, is that theirs? Like, it's just... No, the city owns it. It's okay. it's an old... Um, it's it's an old school. I think they... It was a school that they converted into a, to a football field, and then right next to it, it's, it's, it's the hotel, and and the the rooms where, where the players stay, because they only walk next... Next, yeah, right. n- n- next door to go to... Next door to go to training camp. Sorry about that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but, but yeah, it's actually it's actually a nice facility. Uh, mm-hmm. It's it's free to get in, but I think they charge the park now. Uh, and I don't uh, know about that at all, you gotta get there but... early because it's first come first serve. Mm-hmm. And when that parking lot fills up, you got to find a shuttle to to park your. You got to park way down at the school areas and all that, and they charge and all that. And then you got to find your way back and forth and. It's a hassle. Yeah, it's a whole so, thing. so yeah, you gotta get there. I do know a kid that a, a guy that his uh, name is Patrick Mullen. That guy's always number one in line for training camp. Oh, sick! Wow. Yeah. That guy like spends the night there, bro. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god, he's the first one in line. No, I'm serious. He's the first one. He's been there like all of these years. He's always been the first one in line. You know, Sh- shout out to One Star Family, yeah, Kai. Thanks. How you guys doing, guys? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Oh, there you go. <laughs> but yeah. You know, um, yeah, I, I did like to go to training camp. It was actually fun because we would get there early and we would go like a block away. There's this, there's like a park 
we would go all there and tailgate a little bit mm-hmm. and party and all that. And <laughs> yeah. then, then we would, would caravan like, like into the training camp. Mm-hmm. And then, um, they had a big, that was a big fan base out there. It was, it's called SCDC FC is it in a sense for Southern California and Dallas Cowboy fan club. Nice. And, uh, I was in it <laughs> and, but, um, now you're part of the, the home I, team. The home I team. mean, I wish I still was in it, but, uh, but anyways, uh, that that's a big f- f- fan base, and uh, they do a lot of stuff for uh, out there. They had a great year this year. They they actually met uh, uh, what's that guy's name? Um, Malone. Mahomes. No, oh, Post Malone. Post Malone. Post Malone. Post Malone. Yeah, yeah, man. Uh, uh, the, the, that is awesome, man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he had a he had a, like a s- s- signing out there or something. Nice. I mean, I I mean, I don't know what it was, but. Mm-hmm. But uh, raising canes, <laughs> probably, probably that. Yeah, and then yeah, man, Percy I didn't know that guy was a big. AT&T, yeah, I didn't know he was a big cowboy fan. Yeah, he's he a, oh, is he really? Uh, is he? He's from Fort Worth. I want to say. No, I th- he think he's from. Uh, it's not Grand Prairie, is it? No, no it's, it's uh, like Grapevine out there somewhere. Okay, yeah, that's, oh, wow. that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so he's a he's a he's from wow. here. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But I didn't know he was that big of. Apparently, a fan. him and Jerry are tight. Apparently. Wow. Yeah, right, yeah. <laughs> Everybody sat with Jerry. Yeah, he sold out AT&T for uh, Posty Fest, they call it, every year. Damn. Wow. Yeah, dude. Yeah. I'd like to go to that. that sounds Jerry cool. making some money. I'm telling you, yeah, I'm right, it, dude, everything yeah. that comes in and out of that concert, all that stuff, bro, he's making money. Well, Wrestling. What pisses, dude, what pisses me off is we could have had another home playoff game. I could have been running the shuttle on Sunday. Instead of like, <laughs> around, you know, like I could have been driving back and forth having fun with all these people. <laughs> Yeah, the, I got shot down, dude. That actually sucks because you know what though. A lot of things depend on you know around here. A lot of things depend on the Cowboys Stadium, you know, and like the fact that you can just go out and say, "Oh, we we just weren't ready." Like you understand, like what that would have brought in just to have another game. Yeah, like that would have the whole place would have been electric. I mean, you know? that's what I'm saying. I, I don't see how I can't be I, by that. I don't see how Jerry didn't fire him the next no. day if you're not Understand prepared for it like because that, he's still under game. contract though. I don't I would, give a damn. I, I would buy his country guy and fire him. He just told me he makes all this money coming yeah. in and out. Uh-huh. You know, he it's not going to be anything to Jerry Jones to fire He Mike has another McCarthy. year with us, man. Yeah. And then his contract's up. But This is the thing. that There's great coaches out there right now. Mm-hmm. My uh, Mike Vrabel. There's Belichick. There was Antonio Pierce. Jim Harbaugh. Mm-hmm. Next year... They're already gonna have a job if we, under contract. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. If Mike McCarthy does the same damn thing, we're gonna have to go out there and get an <laughs> offensive coordinator that's hot for the Detroit Lions. You know, yeah, something like you know, that. we're not yeah. gonna get a no. proven hardcore pick of the litter. Kind of yeah, deal. we yeah. need a hardcore right one. Right now, mm-hmm. you're not gonna find any great coaches like this ever again. Shit, I'll even take Nick. All, they're all Nick, available. Nick Saban, man, oh, bring yeah. him. Nick Saban. Bring him out of sure, bring I don't, think, he, I don't nah. think he'll. He I don't gonna, think he's going to coach again, but that's go, another name. He's yeah. going to I mean, go to the booth. There's Who's no the way. Guy, uh, from um, the Saints uh, went up to uh, Colorado for a little bit. Oh, 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 oh yeah. Uh, oh, oh, no, yeah, Sean, Payton. Sean Payton. Sean Payton. Yeah, dude, I think he would have been a good one. Yeah, yeah, because he would have came in and like he probably. I don't know that he would have. Sean, Sean wanted to coach here. Yeah, he. he they should have fired. Uh, uh, Garrett and hired him before he left to, to New yeah. Orleans. Should have, should have. Don't get started on Garrett. Should have, should have, would have, would have. The Clapper. <laughs> Dude, I was at the, I was at the bar. Or, uh, I was watching one of the games, and I don't know what where Garrett does his. Uh, like he 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 does the. He's one of the guys that talks during the game or whatever, but mm-hmm. I don't remember which one he's on. But uh, they thought for, I think it was the Chiefs games or something, like he came on for a second. And I don't think he was actually doing it for that game, but they're like, dude, if I got to listen to him for three hours, I'm out of here. Bro. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, God, dude. There's still hate around here, dude. Well, I forgot what, cha- what channel is he on. It's, it's like channel 11? No, that's Fox. He's on five. Four. Five. Yeah, yeah five. Okay. He's on, uh, is it NBC Sunday night? Or CBS? Hmm? NBC. Is it? No, he got fired off that one. Did he? Oh, did he? <laughs> he just steady getting I fired. I think that was that. <laughs> I think he got fired the previous year, so this is his first year not with not somebody had, else. Yeah. yeah, okay. Yeah. Cuz I haven't seen I him think this he year. Was on Sunday night. Yeah. Oh, I mean, yeah. so from there and then you go to the night. Giants, bro. <laughs> what the hell, bro? <laughs> what the hell? Come on. Well, that's man. where he's from, I guess. Uh, he and he like did play yeah. there for what? 
two two seasons, three seasons. Yeah. After he left here, he went up there and played with with the Giants. Maybe he has. I don't know if it's the same. Uh, possibly the same owner. So you know. Mm-hmm. Okay, so since we're still on the Dallas Cowboys subject, <laughs> first pick for the draft. What'd you guys say? What do we need? Uh, <laughs> a whole team? <laughs> a general manager? <laughs> I feel like our offensive line needs a little help. Yeah. Probably. That'd probably be you you got to start building up that line, man. Yeah. I'm telling you. Because yeah. I can't see anybody on defense that I would, nah. yeah, that I would be too worried But you do about. know that, that we got 15 f- free agents, and I think five of them are starters. Oh really? Yeah. Oh jeez. Okay, yeah. so let's address that. Yeah. So that that's that's going to be a tough one. Uh, uh, we got Curse is going to be Gilmore's on it. Uh, Pollard's on it. Um, yeah. So really. Yeah. So I mean, um, that's that's going to be tough. That's always a problem. Uh, uh, you're a free agent, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, All right, yeah, I think Pollard was on a um, on the, the yeah. franchise tag. Yep. So he, yeah. So that's just a one year deal. Yeah. So, mm-hmm. so he, yeah, he, so he, he's on it. But so he had numbers this year, you know, like he did good. Who? Pollard. Donard? Yeah. Garbage. He's just not a runner. Like he, he's he, not. He's you not need. We need. We need. We need somebody in between tackles. Yeah. Yeah. He's, outside, he's a space guy. You know. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because uh, he, he well, was awesome that. last year get with us Z. A, get us a fullback, like you said earlier, dude. That, I always just say, go back to the fullback. I mean, I mean, you can't go wrong. I, I mean. You have another blocker, mm-hmm. plus you have another guy that can open up the holes mm-hmm. if you get a for, good your, for your running back. Passes yeah. shit too, you know? yeah. I mean, I mean, <clears throat> look how good it it it, it did for Emmett, mm-hmm. and then it did for Tony. Yeah, it worked great. Why are we not doing it? It's classic football, dude. Yeah, it is. <sighs> go 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 back to your old roots that got you there. Mm-hmm. Why don't we just After run the wishbone? All these years, man. Do on the wing T, whatever you want to do. Wish, does anybody run Wishman? No. 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 That's old school, baby. <laughs> yeah, That's old school, baby. It's old school. I think oh, Army man. used to like five years ago or something. Yeah. <laughs> the good old Wishbone, man. Mm-hmm. The athletes aren't, you know, up to par there. Well, it's Army, not Smash but, Mouth football yeah, anymore, dude. That, That's the thing about it. That's crazy when you have them three running backs. And then, yeah, dude. Yeah. That's crazy, dude. Yeah. Yeah. I, I wonder what good. they're going to run. Hello. <laughs> run, <laughs> run. <laughs> run down your throat. Yeah. Run, 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 run. <laughs> oh man! Yeah. So, I I would say, get an offensive line. The defense is all right right now. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, work I mean, on your offense, offense man. Yeah. I understand that defense win ball games, but you still got to put up the points. Definitely, yeah. you know. Yeah. And um, we we have a great kicker, so we ain't got to worry about that anymore. It's awesome, oh, bro. And his yeah, so insane. He only awesome. missed one this year. Yeah, one man, and and. Uh, he was jinxed through that game, but uh, uh, what they say he's like he's been a, a professional like four times. He was this a, is his fourth time. He was oh, on yeah, a he went uh, MLS, an, 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 yeah, two an, different MLS, teams, two maybe. two different leagues. You said USFL, USFL, yep. USFL the, the and then us Birmingham Stallions, or whatever it's called. Uh, I I, I guess the Birmingham Stallions. He was I on. He yeah. played for uh, yeah. Dallas for a while. Dallas FC. I'm, I might be wrong. I know he's is he from Dallas FC is a soccer team, right? Like that, yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Do you know he he did play soccer, mm-hmm. but I think before he came to Dallas, he was on the Birmingham Stylings. Okay, yeah, I'm yeah. pretty sure it's that. Yeah, because the the story like apparently he was like uh, oh, he, he had got let go from MLS and like he was watching football and his yeah. wife was like, "Do you think you could kick those?" Yeah. He's like, I he has a leg on him. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he has a leg on him. Oh yeah, man. Yeah. He's so, good there. So we, we have don't have to best, worry about that. We have the best quarterback in the league, right? <laughs> yeah. Well, you, wait a minute. So, so, I will say one thing good about that. He had the most touchdowns. He had mm-hmm. number, he had thirty six, and then I think uh, Brock was underneath them, and then uh, um, what's his name from from Jackson, Green or, Bay? Um, oh, uh, love, love the love. Love was it was Dak, Brock, and then the love. Interesting. Yeah. So Dak did have one of the most That's touchdowns, thirty six, and it it seemed like we were rolling so hot, man, dude. We were on fire. And then it just, everything just crumbled. We were undefeated here. Yeah. Undefeated. We've never lost. Undefeated. 16 and 0. And then the one that we lose. Is the worst one that we had to lose <laughs> to. Green <laughs> Bay. Green Bay yes. owns us too. Yes. Damn it. Oh, and uh, there were so many people talking oh shit God. before the game. I'm driving them down there, dude. I had this one guy on the I, I, I told you it wasn't like, a catch. <laughs> oh, my God. I hear that too. 
like, get out of here with your facts, yeah. okay? And then they went out there and beat our ass. All week I was saying, we'll win yeah. as long as uh, – I thought we Aaron had Aaron Rodgers doesn't show up. Ah, there it is, dude. <laughs> and the spirit of Aaron Rodgers he comes showed up. Through, dude. Yeah. I honestly and truly, deep down in my heart, thought we had it. I, I thought, thought we had it. Until I thought this halftime. this was going to be our year to at least go to the Super Bowl because no one's going to beat Baltimore. I'm not. Now I can't say nobody because you know what? Detroit's on fire. Yeah. I bet you Detroit beats San Francisco. Baltimore's going to be Kansas City, so it's going to be Baltimore and Detroit in the Super Bowl. That would be crazy. Well, I hope Debo I Samuel just, doesn't play, yeah. so that way Lions can beat him. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, dude, that's, I, that's, that's what I've said this all about. year, man. If that if the San Francisco 49ers come 100% to any game, there's not a team in the league that's going to beat them. Yeah. If they go 100% and like, they play how they play, they're good. that's over with, buddy. Yeah. yeah. But same thing could be said for the Ravens. Oh, wait a minute. Yeah. Yeah. They come 100% and they have a good game, it's over. Yeah. Yeah. So that'd be a clash right there. But that Lions storyline right now, dude, dude, that city needs that shit. What do you bro. think I'm, they're, they're saying about us? See, that sh- that proves them to cheat on, on that call. That way, We didn't cheat on that call. Yeah, dude. Troy even said that, that there should have been four penalties called on, on that, that call. Yeah. It ain't our fault that that player did not report. I mean, come on, dude. I mean,. How are how are we cheating? That is such a weird like foul to get at the end there though. Like it's like, and then then uh, uh Stephen A. Smith comes on and says, "Yeah, the Dallas Cowboys were uh, lucky to get there because that call." And then he tells us last week, "I picked the Cowboys. The only one that's going to stop them is the San Francisco 49ers. Mm-hmm. I was on on that show too. Were you? But, yeah. Hell yeah. Yeah, but but um, no, you, you know so. Stephen A. Smith does it all for a show. Mm-hmm. Him and Jerry are really tight. Jerry flew oh, yeah. him in, in into Frisco f- for the uh, for the first take last year, mm-hmm. and um, that was whenever things got right. turned. Right? So, so he does the stuff about the fans, about he hates us and all that. He really don't hate us, man. Yeah. It's all about the ratings of the show. Mm-hmm. It brings the ratings up. Just smart guy, dude. You know, it's but a um, dummy, that's for sure. But yeah, you well, know he what? He doesn't raise me because I don't watch him because he hates Cowboys. Yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> I don't want to hear it. There you go. Hell yeah. <laughs> you know what he told the producer about me? That guy sc- screwed up his body. <laughs> what? <laughs> Steven, chill out, he said I screwed up my body. I'm like, wow, man. <laughs> they actually had, had him film it right on it, dude. I mean, I mean, I was on a, on TV right there with, yeah. with my back showing in. He goes, "That guy screwed up his body." <laughs> Don't yeah. be a hater, bro. Come on, you now. know he, he he. But hey, but tell you should call him back, call him and tell him, "Hey, wait till the six Super Bowl." There you go, yeah. right? <laughs> That's gonna get real because you're gonna be like here. Posty. <laughs> Hell yeah, dude. All right, guys. Well, we are coming up on roughly around two hours. Has it been two hours? This about we're hour forty seven. So what I want to do is. Tell everybody, so you have the you have that drive coming. Where can they find you on social medias and all that stuff? Okay, Give so them an avenue. So anybody that wants to donate, please do it. Not for me. Do it for your heart. Mm-hmm. Where is your heart? Do it for a good cause. They can either call Plush in the Rush. It's a teddy bear warehouse. Wholesale teddy bear warehouse. It's not expensive. Two dollars and fifty cents for a bear is not expensive at all. Mm-hmm. $10, Call them. 25 bucks. Yeah, exactly. Call them. Talk to Tammy. Tell them that you want to place an order. Place your order and tell them that, that to call Tattoo Mark and I'll come and pick them up and take them to storage. We need them now. Not later, but we need them now. I said that's probably the easiest way to get or there. Or you can do me on social media. I'm, I'm on Facebook. I'm on Instagram. Or you can even call my phone number 626 536 Seven two two five. Give give me a call. We can meet up. Remember, all bears protocol number one protocol. But by all the hospitals, they must have tags on them yeah. because we don't want to bring in a a bear that smells like cigarettes. Any unlicensed. Yeah, yeah. you know. So so everything has to be sanitized. Everything, all that. Mm-hmm. But but I did. They know what they're doing over it. I did leave out one thing that w- really touched our heart and. Um, before each kid gets a bear, every bear that I donate is blessed by a, either a pastor, a, a chaplain, or somebody. They take them down to the basement. They bless every single bear before a kid gets on that bear. Aw. It's awesome, man. That's nice. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So 
just just think, you guys out there, if if you guys donate some bears, you're gonna put a smile on the kid's face, mm-hmm. and you're gonna be doing it for a good deed, and do it do it for your heart, please. And the bigger we make this, the farther it reaches. Oh yeah, because There's eighteen absolutely. hospitals now, bro, man. What what if five years? It's eighteen hospitals. Yeah. It was one. Yeah. I only had cooks. Mm-hmm. That that was it. Yeah. Now I'm at eighteen hospitals. This is huge. So let's go, dude. Yeah, yeah. That's so, what I'm talking about. So you. Y'all can jump on it. If uh, you, you guys know some sponsors, mm-hmm. to tell them to give them a call. I mean, I'm. Talk to Brent. I mean, I'll definitely meet up with them because um, it's actually, it's actually a good tax write off too. There you go. You know, uh, I know a guy that likes a good go. tax write off. There you go. <laughs> so uh, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, let me sit down with them because we need a lot of bears this year. You know, I mean, every every year is just growing and growing and growing, and I got the hospitals. But it needs so bears. Missed a man, dude. Yeah. yeah. So, oh, man. I mean, if if I was rich and I had the money, I would buy myself. That's not the problem. The problem is that I can't do it. Yeah. Right now, so, so I do need help from y'all. So, whatever y'all can do to help help them, I, I, I think, I think we'll work. be able to find enough people. Yeah. Good. After this, and mm-hmm. we appreciate it. Oh, absolutely. You know, yeah. we can find a good, good people to have. I can help you on that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah because because it. It's an amazing cause, dude. It, it, yeah. It, and it's you know what? It's so simple is what I like about yeah. it, too. Yeah. 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 You know, I I mean, because these these hospitals go crazy when I drive up. Yeah. They're like, oh, my God. No <laughs> way. <laughs> and, and then, uh, which one was it? Was it, um, it was Scottish Right. They have a producer. They have their own studio producer there. Oh, sick. Yeah. yeah. So he actually came out, filmed us and all that stuff. And, nice. And yeah. a, they had to make a commercial like a... Like a hospital commercial out of it, mm-hmm. and it was, it's awesome, you know. Yeah. And then, uh, f- fortunately, I met L- Latoya. She's uh, twelve years old. She just passed away about a couple weeks ago, oh. and um, that was her on last on Christmas. And uh, uh, being able to s- s- see her for the last time, um, I'm gonna tell you guys a quick story that um, when I was in Houston, what was it last year, year before, and I made the delivery. I had this little kid come out with his mom and dad behind him. He had his Ivy hookup with a wristband. And he came and he jumped on me and hugged me and cried for a teddy bear. I'm, I'm a grown-ass man. I lost it. I lost yeah. it. I lost it. I gave him that bear. His name's Andrew. His mom got my information because she said, oh, you know, we need to write a letter to the Cowboys. I said, it's not about the Cowboys. It's about me. The Cowboys did not tell me to do this. I'm doing it. No, we need to let them know what they're doing. So I didn't argue. So I, so I, so I did give her my information. Three months later, I get a phone call. Andrew died, passed away, and they buried him with, with that bear. Oh, man. <laughs> yeah. That's. Yeah. Oh. Now, there you go. That's precious. There you go. It's awesome. That's there you go. stories, man. That's what, that's, that's what you do it for, dude. That's yeah. all I got to yeah. say. You Ernie, know, do you have um, anything else for the people? Um, I just want to say that uh, we're my organization, Pan American Golf Association, is going to help you out 100 percent this year, brother. Thank you, brother. And like I said, uh, we're going to sit down. I'll get with these other chapters that I have in El Paso, Houston, and San Angelo. Of course, here in the Metroplex as well, we have three: uh, Dallas, Irving, and uh, Fort Worth. We'll all get together, and we'll and make we'll happen. be able to happen, make it happen. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank Absolutely. Thank you. And to all all you people out there, thank you very much. I love you, and so does God. All right? Stay blessed. And you know what? I hope to see you here next year. And one more thing. Let's go, Cowboys! <laughs> <There it is. laughs>